from the Crescent City of the Old South. Here's a big Happy New Year, 1985, as ABC Sports presents... From the Superdome in New Orleans... The matchup of Nebraska from the Big 8 Conference and LSU from the Southeastern Conference. In the 51st play of the Sugar Bowl football game. And on the night before the world takes a deep breath, stepping into the new year, we roll into the second half century for the Sugar Bowl football game, played annually here in New Orleans, Louisiana. It's normally a game matching the Southeastern Conference champions and a visiting team. This year, Florida was the SEC champion for the first time ever, but sanctioned from the Sugar Bowl by the conference for NCAA violations. LSU was the next in line, and so the Tigers are here for the first time since 1968 against the Big 8 co-champion Nebraska Cornhuskers. It is a festive night in the old city by the Big Muddy. It's been a rather festive weekend as the Nebraska Cornhusker faithful have been able to go to a city other than Miami for a change. And they seem to have relished the change. LSU, of course, just located a few miles down the road in Baton Rouge, but have not come here in several years. Singing our national anthem tonight, Miss Wendy Hillhouse from Redwood City, California, the winner of this year's National Association of Teachers of Singing. She the won the Artist's Award. Award. Wendy Hillhouse just won the award with a scholarship of $5,000. And she now stands in the Superdome to sing our national anthem with the combined bands of the University of Nebraska and Louisiana State. Syracuse 17-9 in their fourth game. Rebounded to beat a tough Oklahoma State team. Regained their number one ranking, but then in the final game of the season, lost by 10 to Oklahoma. Coach Tom Osborne, 12 years, 117-27-2. And, and listen to this. All 12 of his teams have ranked in the top 10, and all 12 have had bowl bids. Not bad. Two and one, ranked 11th and 12th in the AP and UPI polls. Five, Florida, the opener. Lost to Notre Dame in the Mississippi State. Coach Bill Arnsparger's first year as a collegiate head coach after so many years in pro football. His first trip to the Sugar Bowl for LSU since 1968, where they beat Wyoming by a score of 20 to 13. Hello again, everybody. Keith Jackson along with Coach Frank Broyles and a Happy New Year to all of you. There is no first place at stake in the ball game. It's the first time, actually, Frank, 
In nine years, the outcome of this game has not had some kind of an impact on the national championship. As far as I'm concerned, number one's been in the bank for some time. It's BYU, the only Division 1A team to win 13 and lose none. So let's turn to what I think is an interesting matchup here in New Orleans tonight. The Cornhuskers of Nebraska and the Tigers of LSU. These coaches have contrasting theories as how to win football games. The power of Nebraska versus the speed and finesse of LSU. Nebraska has a preference for running the football. They hammer away at you and let whatever happens take place. LSU, on the other hand, has the speed, finesse. They spread the defense out, and I think it has great promise for them to win this football game. By spreading Nebraska out, it forces them into individual maneuvers rather than the team effort. And one condition on this promise, Keith, Je quarterback Jeff Wickersham have a great ball game. If he can, LSU can give him trouble. Now, I know that you feel that in order to keep your running game sharp and intact, you can't take a long layoff. But over the holiday period, after the regular season's over, you have to take a long layoff. The toughest part of the game, the time, is the running game. It requires contact and scrimmage, and coaches are reluctant to scrimmage during these 30 days. They don't want to risk any injuries. So Nebraska could suffer the most in this, and I would just say if you look at bowl records, you will find that passing teams usually win, or passing does win the game most of the time. Now, speaking of passing, it, it'll be interesting to watch tonight. Bill Arnsparger, you know, spent many, many years with the Miami Dolphins and, and Don Shula. His defensive philosophy at times is brilliant. In fact, some folks call it the textbook. He likes to force you inside, though, with your passing game. He will not give you the outer perimeter. Well, the strength of the LSU defense is in their secondary. They've had 27 interceptions. And by playing this style and this scheme, their linebackers have intercepted eight and they're safe to man six. This is contrary to what anything that Nebraska has seen defensively. They'll have to materially alter their passing game if they're going to have any success, and that could be risky. It's been a tough week for Tom Osborne, the head coach of the Nebraska Cornhuskers, for a rather untoward reason. For that story, let's join our colleague Tim Brent. Keith, it has been a tough week for Tom Osborne, and I have to believe that some of the distractions caused by some very ugly accusations have filtered down to this, this ball club here at Nebraska. Now, Booker Brown is a former football player from Southern Cal, and he sent a notarized letter this week to members of the media here in New Orleans, and in there, there were accusations saying that Tom Osborne tried to entice him to the University of Nebraska 12 years ago with some Ill illegal offers. And those offers, those allegations include cash, trips, and a few other things along the way. But the bottom line here is that both men submitted the polygraph test this week and both passed. Now, Tom Osborne is respected throughout the college football fraternity because he's honest and he's candid. And we talked to him yesterday about this incident, and you'll hear some of those comments coming up at halftime. But there's two things he mentioned to us off camera that I think should be mentioned here. One is that he thinks this entire incident was a power play by Brown's agent Mike Trope to gain access to some of the Nebraska athletes. And second, yes, Tom Osborne is considering litigation. But the bottom line here is that his integrity has been challenged and his reputation has been threatened. It's going to be interesting now to see how his football players respond because their minds have been on an awful lot this week other than LSU. This ABC Sports Exclusive is being brought to you by Chevrolet, who invites you to see today's Chevy, drive today's Chevy, live today's Chevy. By U.S. Armed Forces, it's a great place to start. By Delta Airlines, 36,000 professionals serving more than 100 cities in the United States and overseas. Delta gets you there. And by Wang. Wang puts people in front of computers. In the previous meetings between these two teams, Nebraska has won three. There's been a tie, but not very many points difference between them over this series. And if you remember the last time in the Orange Bowl, it was a dandy. Incidentally, many of the LSU players were in that game at the Orange Bowl. Very few of the Nebraska players. Here is the kickoff by Dale Klein, with Nebraska having won the toss, selecting it up to the second half. And this is Gary James, averaging just over 23 yards per return. But this time, the coverage by the Cornhuskers stop him short of the 20. And LSU opens with Jeff Wickersham at quarterback, 195-pound junior. Dalton Hilliard is your multi-purpose back, 185-pound junior. Gary James, the other back, 200-pounder. He's a junior. Eric Martin, a brilliant wide receiver, 195, 6'1". Herman Fontenot, the flyer inside, 6'1 and 210. And you've got an LSU injury on the opening play of the ball game, the kickoff, and it looks like a knee 
Down on the field, it is either 80 or 90. I guess it's 80. It's, oh boy, that's Roji McGee, Frank. That's one of the speedsters, one of the primaries in the LSU pass receiving corps, but it is 90, not McGee. It is 90, Darren Marlboro. And I was trying to remember that I had not seen McGee previously in a kickoff return situation, so it is not him. It is Marlboro, and it looks like bad news for Darren as he's being helped off the field and he's dragging the left knee. The offensive front, Mitch Andrews, a pass catching tight end, 235. Lance Smith, All-American, 275 at tackle. Langford at guard, 260. Tommy Campbell at center is 240 pounds. Kurt Gore, the guard, is 255. And the other tackle is John Harrell at 250 pounds. And so LSU, the home team, by the flip of the coin this year, goes up to the first snap of the ball at the 18 first down for the Tigers. Back goes Ricochet on the throw, slips, keeps his knee off the ground, goes down the middle with a short pass to Hilliard, good out to about the 26. Ricochet tripping as he dropped off the snap and almost fell down for a considerable loss but recovered and kept the knee off the ground and was able to complete the pass. Ricochet, number five, is just a junior. He holds, and Keith is right, he caught himself with the left arm, otherwise his knee would have touched and it would have been a big loss. Mackey goes to throw again, sets up a screen out here to Fontenot, number 40, and Fontenot breaks it up to the 35 and picks up a first down. So on a second down and three, they swing it out. It wasn't much of a screen, really, because there was only one man in front of him. There, the defensive alignment, in part, we'll get that thing fixed and show you in a moment or two. Still not working. But um, up front, defensively, for Nebraska, you've got Weber, Spockman, Graber, Stuckey, and Strasburger. Linebackers are Munford and Dom. LSU now setting it up on first down from their own 35 with a high back and a slot man and Wickersham on a deep drop. No pressure down the middle. The pass is caught to Eric Martin. And Martin is at the Nebraska 47 for a first down brought down by Neil Harris. And so LSU is testing the Nebraska secondary in the first series. Eric Martin, number 41, holds five LSU passing record career and seasonal. He's already caught 47 this year, 52 last year. Holds about decent conference record for most yardage in one season. Dave Burke, Brett Clark, Mike McCashlin, and Neil Harris, the defensive secondary. And right now, LSU's got him spread out, and they got it first down. The ball is on the 47 of the Huskers. The only real running play is Dalton Hilliard on a sweep to the outside. And he's got five yards as he breaks inside the 42, and Chad Duffer, a linebacker, is in. And now the work begins on the knee of young Darrell Marlboro. Well, we hope it's not serious. Don't believe that it is, Keith. They would have a doctor over there. A freshman linebacker. LSU has looked very sharp. And these early goings from their one-back offense, similar to what Washington Redskins have used for the last three years. Call it a six-yard pickup and second down four from the 41. Double wide top, hand off to that lone remaining back. Dalton Hilliard hits to the 39 before he's brought down. He's a 185-pounder, but I think he runs bigger than that. Here's the rundown of the defensive people. Visually now that we got that cranky machine working for you. It's a pretty good sized defensive front too for Nebraska and they depend a great deal on those two outside people to apply pressure Weber and uh, Strasburger. Keith, we should mention that Nebraska has nine seniors, all of them returning starters from last year's team. And it's the top ranking defensive team in the country. Third down and three now as Rickerson throws down a pop that is incomplete. The ball was into the belt buckle of Roger McGee, but he was hit by Dennis Watkins as the ball arrived, and McGee could not put it away, and it pops out. The basis of pass defense is you react on the ball once it's thrown. Wickersham fumbles. The ball is a little bit late, gives the defensive back a time to arrive at the receiver at the same time and knocks the ball loose, preventing a first down. Not a whole lot of reason, though, for McGee not catching that ball, no. right? He had his body protected between him and the defensive back. Therefore, he should have protected the ball very diligently. Four-year career for Clay Parker is going to end at just under a 41-point average for his punting. And he'll be kicking it to a senior defensive back, Dave Burke. Burke standing back at the 10. Parker hits a tail dragger that turns over for him, but it turns over 
in the end zone, so obviously it'll come back to the 20. It was a 39-yard punt. He was trying to spin it into the corner and get the ball to go out of bounds somewhere near the goal line, but he couldn't accomplish it. So the Huskers will come out now with Craig Sundberg at quarterback. Jeff Smith will open at eye back. They're both seniors. Tom Rathman will be the fullback. He's a junior. Jane Swanson, the wingback. He is a senior. A lot of seniors going to be playing their final game today for Nebraska. Scott Kimball, a wide man at uh, the split-in position. He is also a senior. From the 21st down, Huskers. And Sundberg pulls the trigger. Gives the ball to Smith. And two yards on the carry as Jeff Smith from Wichita, Kansas, bangs in there. Here are the big people now. Brian Hamer is the tight end, 6'3", 215. Tom Morrow at tackle, 260 pounds. Greg Orton at guard, 260. Mark Twainowitz, the center, 265. Eric Griminger, the guard, is 265. And Mark Painting, the senior at tackle, is on at uh, 290, just a mere shadow. They're all seniors along the front. Second down and eight. tried desperately to keep his knees off the ground, but he just couldn't do it. He tripped coming out of there. I don't know if he tripped on the carpet or tripped over his own feet or somebody else's. Hazard, Clapp, Wilson, Dubrock, Burks, Chapman, and Brooks. Now, these are the people that create the pressure for the LSU defense with Gidry, Jefferson, Dale, and Hobley forming the secondary. But the linebackers for LSU are particularly active and particularly so in the case of Brooks. If he gets to line up without the tight end to oppose him, he gets a free ride into the backfield. It is third down and about 14, and down the middle, the ball is thrown to the tight end, and Todd Crane makes the catch up around the 23, well short of the first down, and so it brings on the kicking tee. Steve Nixon is a LSU linebacker, is a very active, they're excellent on pass defense. I mentioned earlier that as we look at Tom Osmond talking to his quarterback, Craig Sundberg, the line, LSU linebackers, Keith, have intercepted eight passes. I don't know of any team in America I'm familiar with where the linebackers have intercepted that many. Scott Livingston is in the punt. He's all big eight this past season with a 41.2 average on 49 punts. Gets it out of there, hits a good one, gets it to turn over, and that means it hangs longer, and a fair catch is called by Norman Jefferson, a sophomore, for LSU. And so the Bengals have the ball first down at their own 28 on that 48-yard kick. The game is a sellout here in the Superdome in New Orleans, with home area LSU back in here for the first time since 1968. Of course, back in those days, they played an old Tulane Stadium outdoors. Here's the handoff now to Gary James, the bigger of the touchdown friends of LSU, and he has broken it big. He's all the way down to the 33-yard line of Nebraska. Dave Burke finally brought him down. Here's Gary James, number 33. Watch the block by 21, Hillian, blocking for his partner right there, and watch the speed, 36-yard run. James runs a 4-3-40, completely outruns Levitt, Harris, and 10 Clark, the safety. Good block from his flanker. Shows a little move, head and shoulder. Finally gets knocked out of bounds by Burke, number 33. And from the 38 of Nebraska, 38 it is, first down. Wickersham back to throw to the sideline. Pass caught by Eric Martin inside the 30, near the 28, and that's close to a first down. Eric Martin, as we've already said, holds many LSU records. He was a running back, came here as a freshman, as a running back, sophomore year, moved the receiver, and has set many records, good hands, just runs precise routes, outstanding all Southeastern Conference. Here are some of the records that he's held at, L has at LSU. And he will tear you up. He can run with the ball after he catches it. Second down and one. Hilliard. Now coming in on a nice play is number 99, Ken Shedd. As Hilliard wanted to go to that side, but Dalton saw Shedd sitting there and tried to juke away from him. And Shedd would have none of it, and so he decks him for a yard loss, and it's third down and two. And this young man has run himself already into the LSU record books. And I want to tell you, folks, there have been some great running backs at LSU over the years, as well as some great quarterbacks over the years. And Messrs. Uh, Hilliard and Wickersham are sitting right near the top of the heap in both categories. 
Craig Rathjen is in there. Good blocker. Give it to James. Garrett James tries for the first down over the right side, and he's going to be close to it. LSU went into a power formation, similar to what Bill Lawrenceberger did at University of Miami. I mean, at Miami, the Dolphins team, LSU, uh, Nebraska crowded inside, and that's where Nebraska is very strong. Believe me, a little bit short of the first half. You spread Nebraska defense out. They're not as successful and effective as they are when they crowd you inside. LSU's going to go here on Absolutely. fourth down and very short. they got no choice, Keith. They've got to go for it. One of the things about the single back offense is patience when you get into the, going, into the scoring area, being able to run that football and put it in the end zone. He's doing something here in the early going against Nebraska now that he did against Notre Dame when he jumped out to an early lead over the firing Irish, fighting Irish in their first loss of the year. But as the game went on, LSU grew a little more macho. They tried to started trying to play Notre Dame head up, Frank. They, they couldn't play Notre Dame head up, and I don't think they can play Nebraska head up either. They cannot. The success of LSU will depend upon their formation, forcing Nebraska to spread Stretch him to cover the field from sideline to sideline as we look at Tom Osborne in his fantastic record. Second winning his coach of active coach. Dalton Hilliard is back in. Fourth and a half a yard, and it goes to Hilliard. Oh, it is kept. Kept by the quarterback, Wickersham. That's a little bit of old riverboat gambling right there, folks, as Wickersham gets the first down all right. As Hilliard goes up to the top of the stack and may or may not have had the play. Now watch the progress here at the top of the stack. He's out without any personal protective. The lineman fakes the defensive line out of the way. And Wickersham, who's not known to be a runner, lowers his head, keeps his legs driving, and makes the first down. By a yard and a half. Despite the fact he was out there all by himself. So that'll tell you something about how much of a gamble that was. Well, I'm not sure Hilliard would have made it. Ricochet back to throw on first down. Loops it up in the corner. Touchdown! Gary James! <laughs> Penalty flag back at the line of scrimmage. Oh, Jatater. It was a beautifully run pattern. James was the inside receiver. He went down and for the flag, and the Nebraska cornerback did not drop deep enough. It's a tough break for LSU. Holding. Offense. Still first down. It is a Southwest Conference crew of officials. Dixon Holman, the referee. Lewis Shuffle, the umpire. Buddy Coleman, Roger Rogers, George Slatsky, and Ron Murphy. Only six, not seven. Nebraska has not faced this style of offense since the Miami game in the Orange Bowl last year. It's first and 20 as the ball comes back to the 36 and Wickersham throws it behind Hilliard and incomplete. This is one of the things that causes Wickersham a lot of trouble. He can be brilliant for four, five, six plays. And then all of a sudden, for some strange reason, He'll fluff up one like that where he's got a man wide open. He'll throw a little knuckleball up there and it'll be behind him. And it's resulted in him also being the leader in interceptions. He's had 30 interceptions, Keith, in two years. 13 this year, 17 last. As we look at the offensive comparisons, we see Nebraska prefers running. LSU mixes it up. Deep drop this time on second down. And three. He's got all day to throw the ball. Hits Gary James with it. And Gary is back to the original line of scrimmage, the 26. Jeff Rickersham has passed for over 2,000 yards both in sophomore and junior year. When you give him this much time, he can go to his second and third choice receivers. His deep men are covered. He finally looks to the right. James is open. Underneath, these type of receivers are out to control the short linebacker coverage. James lowers his head and picks up the 10 yards. So it's third and 10 now from the 26th of Nebraska. And LSU 0 for 2 so far tonight in converting on third down. Got to do it obviously in throwing. Rickersham's pass. Penalty flags are all over the place. As Rickersham's pass down the middle is underthrown, and he's fortunate it wasn't intercepted. If you've got a holding call, I'm sure, over there among on one of the receivers. Yeah, it was the receiver, either offense or defense. I'm not sure, but they collided, and it's against the defense. Obviously, uh, the Nebraska was trying to disrupt the receivers. It's holding against the uh, Nebraska secondary. Defense. Eric Martin, number 20, number 41, is the wide receiver. When he tries to go inside, 
McCashlin, number two, has got him right there with his right arm. You can see him hold him right there. The official was right on top of it and dropped the flag. Ten-yard penalty. Holding by the defense before the pass was thrown. Automatic first down. Well, I guess everything uh, balances out. And so we have no score here, LSU having lost a touchdown here in the opening quarter to a penalty is now back to a first down and 10 from the Nebraska 16. And Dalton Hilliard carries it up over right guard, finds a great big gaping hole and goes thundering inside the 10 and down to about the eight yard line. LSU offensive men, Keith, as we look at Tom Osborne, I know how worried he is right now. He cannot prepare his team for a opponent like LSU that has such speed and great runners and a good passer. The first quarter, he's going to have to make some real adjustments. Six and a half minutes to go in the first period. We welcome those of you who have been enjoying the Rose Bowl. This is the Sugar Bowl. Dalton Hedger trips up at the 10. He may have tripped over the feet of Wickersham, the quarterback, as Wickersham dropped back. Either that or that field is very sticky because we've had a lot of people now have trouble with their footing. And not because they are slipping, mind you, but because they are sticking to it. Maybe they've got a kind of a shoe on here that's causing them some trouble on this particular surface. Could be, Keith. Most people in, in a game like this wear tennis shoes. They don't wear any cleats at all. But if you do put cleats on, sometimes the traction is so substantial that you put clogs in. It is third down and three. It figures a passing play now as McGee goes in motion and a penalty flag out of the end zone. One of the side judge back there threw it. And you've got too much time called against LSU. So the Tigers have made a, a youthful mistake perhaps here or at least a lack of organization mistake because they couldn't get the uh, play into the ball game in time. And there's your final score in the Rose Bowl. USC beating Ohio State 20 to 17. The Trojans have a big lead at one time. Offense. Keith, going back Still to this perfect. ball game, the one thing about the sideways offense, the single back, you, when you get close to the goal line, the field compresses and shrinks, and you have difficulty getting it in. LSU this year has attempted 27 field goals, more than any team that we saw all year long. Had trouble getting it across that goal line with a single back offense. It is third down and seven now. LSU still screwed up, so Wickersham calls timeout. So they, they go through that moment of absolute confusion where nobody seems to be able to compute with anybody else. So they'll take time out to talk. Well, hopefully now the Tiger offensive folks have got themselves organized. They don't want to miss this opportunity. The ball is about third and seven. It's setting just outside the 13-yard line of Nebraska. There is no score in the first quarter. And you've got five minutes and 22 seconds to go in the first period. Keep an interesting statistic on LSU. The 64 times that they penetrated four down territory, they ran in at the touchdowns only 24. Well, it figures pass here with Jean-Baptiste Jean and uh, the primary blocker back there. They just carry Wickersham. Good defensive work by the secondary for Nebraska. They jumped all over Eric Martin as he came down the field. They had double coverage on Fontenot, and there literally was nobody for Wickersham to dump the ball to. And so it is fourth down, and the offensive unit sort of dragging its head a little bit now, and Bill Arnsparger is not happy with what he sees. He wants a little more pep and vinegar, I would think. Well, the penalty really took them out of the, of the chance to run the ball in. They had third and two and got a five-yard delay penalty. That's a no-no. Fourth down, and here's your field goal try in the air by Ronnie Lewis, who beat out Juan Batanzos at midseason for the job, and he has nailed a 37-yard field goal. And at 440 to go in the first quarter, LSU takes the lead three to nothing. Bill Arnsparker, a man in his 50s who has come to college football for the first time, talking to him yesterday about his adventures in his first year. I've enjoyed it. I've enjoyed it probably as much as any year I have in coaching. Uh, of course, I always enjoy coaching, and uh, every place I've been, I've enjoyed coaching, and I've worked, had the opportunities with, to be with a lot of fine players and 
a lot of fine coaches, and I've enjoyed that relationship. And uh, But this year, uh, I've enjoyed it uh, even more. I think I'm involved in more things, which I really want to do. I've enjoyed the recruiting and talking to mamas and daddies and the players, and uh, I've enjoyed uh, visiting with the alumni clubs and the fan clubs. I expect that he's going to have a very happy and long run. He has great respect from his players. They believe in him. He told them if they do what he wanted them to do, they'd be playing for the championship. Two yards deep in the end zone, it's Doug Dubose, the Nebraska eye back. And boy, does he take a lick as he comes up across the 15. Whoa, did he get hit? Well, Nebraska has had only one possession so far in this ball game, and a loss by the quarterback dropping back to pass put them in the long yardage. Nebraska must avoid the long yardage. The weakest part of their team is the passing. Oh, the Huskers will go to work now. First down from their 16. And it's Jeff Smith lined up behind Tom Rathman and Craig Sunberg. And Sunberg flips it out to Smith. Breaks to the outside and a good pursuit by LSU as uh, Ricky Chetman goes outside to get him. The inside linebacker going over to make the play. Ball comes out across the 20 near the 21. LSU continues to replace their football team with seniors and juniors. They have the best redshirt program probably in America. Virtually every player but a few. Nebraska has the best redshirt program in America. As you can look at the number of seniors that they have playing in this ball game. Second down and five for the Huskers. And it's Smith pumping it up the middle. Reaches for the 24 and just barely gets there. So he's going to be a couple of yards short of the first down with Tommy Clapp, the nose guard, and John Hazard making the stop. Now, the LSU Tigers are going to have some great football players coming back next year to join their defensive unit. Players who were of the quality to be at least all conference and some of them all American contenders, I think, this year. Well, Alan Barbe is one, I think, of immediately. Kittick and Greg Thomas, the nose guard, they've had a lot of injuries with that defensive line. Third down and two. Sunberg pitches it out to Smith, and Jeff Smith cuts it back against the flow and reaches the 37-yard line before he is brought down by Lippert Copley. One of the toughest plays to stop in football on third and short yardage is the option play. The first choice is to the fullback. Then the quarterback comes out, and then he pitches off to Smith, who gets a good block from the wingback, Swanson and the tight end, Breen, and you can see the cutting ability of Smith, who's had a... Very fine senior year, all Big 8, along with his alternate tailback, the first team all Big 8 in Dubo. Played most of the season, Frank, with a very sore ankle and says he feels better now. It's felt since September. When he hurt the ankle against L uh, UCLA. Yep. Smith this time takes a pretty good lick from a couple of uh, purple shirts as he cuts it over the right side for a couple of yards. And let's join Tim Brandt. Keith, LSU tailback Gary James has suffered a groin injury. It is an aggravation, aggravation of an old injury he had, but he's having trouble right now putting any pressure on it and trying to run. He, as you know, caught that touchdown pass that was negated earlier. Add to that that there is a hamstring problem with Herman Fontenoy, and they're starting to lose now some of their team speed. Yes, they are. Second down and about seven. That's a long seven for Nebraska. And Sunberg, a little stand-up throw to Shane Swanson. Swanson is across the 40 to the 41. And immediately his legs are cut from under him by number 27. That is Kevin Guidry. And along the strong safe, safety, Dale, both had an outstanding, have had an outstanding year. But Keith, we talked about forcing the inside pattern. Normally Nebraska would have thrown an outside pattern for a large game. They had to change it and throw it inside, and the two men held it to a very small game. Well, defense is Bill Arnsparger's specialty. And curious. Had a great career. Third and five. Sunberg got some heat on him, gets it off to the side lines, and it is incomplete. The man was out of bounds. Fitzler, the intended receiver, and Rob could not get down inside the playing area, and so it brings up fourth and five, and the Cornhuskers will have to punt it away. Dropping back now to receive it for LSU will be Norm Jefferson. Livingston is in the punt. The last time that LSU had the ball, they were able to get a field goal from 37 yards to lead three to nothing, though they tried vigorously to thwart their own opportunity. Keep a big question, which could LSU stop the rushing game of Nebraska? They have in the first two possessions, forcing them into passing situations. The 
punt is high and hanging by Livingston and a fair catch called over on the far sideline by Jeffrey Bale, number four. It's a penalty, Chief, because the Nebraska player got too close to the safety man who is signaled for a fair catch. The rule says he must stay two yards away from the safety man. He was very close to him. It's a good call by the official. Here it is on the top of your screen. You can see the white shirt is less than two yards from the defensive safety man as he catches the ball. That is a five-yard penalty. I think we saw some games this past uh, season that probably lent new emphasis yeah. to the enforcement of that rule because it was not always called this past season. A minute and a half to go, first quarter. <laughs> LSU's football, first down, just outside their own 27, with a minute and a half to go in the first quarter. And LSU leading 3-0. Be interesting to see now what happens second time around. LSU had the ball a long time the last time. This is Sammy Martin, number 23, carrying the ball. He's in there now because, as Tim told you a moment ago, Gary James has a groin injury. The ball is carried out to the 39-yard line where he's going to need about three more for his first down. Coming up this coming weekend, the Pro Bowlers Tour. Starts rolling out west with a season premiere from Union City, California at 3 Eastern, 2 Central Time. This event will be seen at 3 out on the West Coast, one of the longest running and most successful sports television programs in the history of the business. With a pop intended for Eric Martin, Gary James had just come in on the play, and he was breaking one way. Martin was the trailer, neither could get to it as Wickersham dumped it in the crowd, and he's lucky to get it back. The advantage of the four-receiver offense, a single back in the running position, are the quick passes. If you don't throw the quick passes, Keith, if you don't establish them, then you're not going to have any success doing anything. They treat those type plays as running plays. That's their version of the sweep. Rathjen in to replace number 13, uh, Gary James. And Wickersham's pass drilled to Eric Martin for a first down. No, it is not Martin. It's Fontenot up at the 45, just over the 45. So Fontenot, who is also laboring a little bit with a slight injury, pulls it into his tummy and makes it first down for LSU. Good protection. Rick, Rick Staff has plenty of time. He's looking at the receiver all the way. Two on one, on two receivers on a single defender. Watch him come up and make the play. Comes up and makes the play, but not before the first down. Just over the 45. Clock is rolling toward a half minute to go in the first quarter of this 51st annual Sugar Bowl. Hilliard to the ball. Cut back in the middle. Oh, that fella can run in traffic. He is exciting, and he crosses midfield to the Nebraska side for a pickup of five. Mark Munford, outstanding sophomore linebacker, is only 19 years old. Right now, he's already established himself as one of the most consistent linebackers Nebraska's ever had. Going to be a great one. Gets blocked back by Campbell, the center, but doesn't give up. Keeps his feet, comes and wraps up his arms around his First quarter is over. So after 15 minutes in the Super Bowl, the home folks, the LSU Tigers, lead the Cornhuskers of Nebraska by a score of three to nothing. We go to the second quarter now of this 51st Sugar Bowl game with the LSU Tigers sitting on the football first down at midfield. That's not first down, it's second down and five. The ball is precisely at midfield. And back goes Jeff Wickersham to throw it. He's got all day, goes to the sidelines and throws it to a Nebraska man standing about five yards out of bounds. Here are your numbers off the first quarter. These numbers show how LSU has played on both sides of the ball, how effective they've been. Their defense has only allowed Nebraska a total of 28 yards in the first quarter on two possessions. On all three of LSU's possessions, they've moved down the field and are still moving the ball very effectively. They seem to have the upper hand with their passing game. Nebraska has not gotten on track. Third and five. He's got Martin down the middle. takes it on down inside the 31 near the 30. First down for LSU. Give Wickersham the much credit as Mark number 41. He has the speed to push deep. You can see he acts like he's going deep. He turns inside, catches the ball. It was kind of a wobbly pass. Wasn't very pretty, but then Martin takes off and 
Nebraska finally brings him to the ground. The workers have stayed right into the pocket. Weak job in defense, however, by Brian Washington, especially on the tackle. Dalton Hilliard trying to cut it back against the grain has his feet whipped out from under him by Ken Shedd, number 99. Jeff Wickersham, the LSU quarterback, has been praised and he's been criticized. He's had a hot hand and then he's had a cold hand. Thrown for 30 interceptions in the last two years. But he also leads LSU. He's the all-time leading passer. If he gets a hot hand, Bill Hansberger told me he's a streak passer. When he gets on a hot streak, watch out. Second and ten. That's Gary James. Stiff arms one man and turns the corner. I think you could see a little bit there that he was dragging the left leg because of the groin pull. If he has all of his speed, I think he sticks at the end zone. Once again, we see the speed. James is a little delay pass, meaning that the linebackers drop deep. You have to throw underneath him. Crossberger, the all-big eight, number 90, tries to make the tackle. He cannot do it to stiff arm by James, who has been timed to 4-3 in the 40-yard dash. Gary's got to sit down over there now. He cannot walk back across the field because of the groin pull. That may have been the last major effort of this ball game for him. Keith, uh, just to show you the play selection of LSU, they've rushed 12 times and they've passed 12 times. Frostberger is an outstanding defensive end. Starter for three years, number 90. His assignment is to drop and cover the zone. Now, once the ball is caught in front of him, he's to come up and make the tackle, but there's a mismatch between the speed of Frostberger and James, number 33, who's the fastest Tiger, and you see how he turns it on and makes the big game. But he may be gone for the day because Tim Brandt told you a while ago he is struggling with a growing pull and he started visibly to hobble going around the corner and it kept him out of the end zone. Watch Gary James and see how injured he really is. He has that, has shown the capacity for bouncing back, has a history of it. Right now, Dalton Hilliard has been pretty quiet in the ball game. James is out of there. James broke a big play in the first possession by LSU to get him going. Right now, your, your backfield people behind uh, Wickersham are Craig Rathjen, a sophomore, and Sammy Martin, a freshman. Rosie McGee, number 80, is also in there. And the handoff goes to Martin. And Sammy Martin, trying to pick up a block, makes his cut too late and runs into the stack and doesn't get much out of it. Ball is setting now inside the 15 of Nebraska at the 13, where it's second down and eight. The advance was two yards. Keith, let's go back again and say that LSU, with their single back offense, has had difficulty getting the ball in the end zone. With a single back, the defense can just key on him and move collectively and make the play. They have to go to the passing game. I guess the Bears finally proved that, didn't they? Yes. <laughs> Wickersham loops it in the corner for Fontenot. Too long penalty flag. Got a bump coming down there. And the bump is against Brett Clark, I think, number 10. Or no, no. Dennis Watkins, yeah. 27. It's the left hand back, Watkins, who's playing in place of Neil Harris. But it's the fade pattern. Fontenot is just going to go to the outside and watch Watkins use his hands right here. He's going to collision him if he was, if he had found to know in front of him that's a legal collision but the fact that they're on the same line of, of, of the field it's an illegal push and pretty close pretty close looked like more of a bump in uh, live action than it did in slow motion I'm surprised that they put the ball on the two yard line I guess yeah I guess that's right first and goal at the two give it a Hilliard over to the left side of your screen. Rathjan fakes to the right. Then you have uh, one of the backs pulling around. Martin fakes to the right. Big hole opening up by the left side of the line. Ronnie Lewis for the extra point. Good. From the end zone, let's see the blocking. 
the key is the line of scrimmage. The pistol area is the line of scrimmage, and you can see the blocking on the right of your screen opens up a big, big hole, and Hilliard goes right through it for the touchdown. Raskin was the leading blocker. He had no one to block. He could have scored if you'd given him the ball. 13 minutes, 11 seconds to go in the first half. LSU 10 and Nebraska still looking for some offense. Well, the Tigers looked a little better organized that time. And they were helped some by Nebraska mistakes in moving at 73 yards for the touchdown. LSU has shown a great deal of confidence. And as we said earlier, if Wickersham gets a hot hand, he can be tough. And Nebraska has not faced this style of offense. They are still trying to get adjusted and lined up properly. The kickoff by DeFrank. DeBose returning for Nebraska. And the young man from Connecticut comes up just short of the 30-yard line. Let's go back to the interference play in the room. Clearly says you, the defensive back can have legal contact with the receiver until the ball is thrown as long as the receiver does not occupy the same line as the defensive back. The receiver seems to be in front of the defensive back. If the ball has not been thrown, right there is not interference. If the ball has been thrown, it is interference. Doug DuBose is your eye back. He's a little quicker than Smith. Ball is handed off to Porter, the fullback, and Scott Porter. And that's almost an upset these days when a Nebraska fullback gets to see the ball. It's up to about the 34, where it'll be second down and six. Nebraska's going to have to attack the middle of the LSU defense, which has been hurt by injuries to their nose guard Thomas, to their tackle Kittuck, to Osborne, another tackle. They have a makeshift defensive line, and that is the weakness of the LSU defense at this time. I would think they just beat on them. To pound them is what Nebraska likes to do. Sunberg lifts it out to DeVos. DeVos is told you quick feet. Slashes inside and picks up a first down at the 44. ABC's Wide World of Sports coming up Saturday. U.S. Olympic gymnast will feature the young lady from Fairmont, West Virginia, who's become a star, Mary Lou Retton. And you'll see Mark Breland in his second professional fight from Atlantic City. Another youngster bidding to become a star. This ball begins at 4.30 Eastern time. This coming center. Back goes Sunberg. Down the middle pass good. Caught for the tight end Brian Hamer. And Hamer's got a first down for the Huskers at the 43 of LSU. LSU has been playing the 10 men close to the line of scrimmage on first down. Most colleges do that. A running play fake. Has the linebackers up into the line, and you can see that Hammer is wide open right there. Sunberg is right on target at a key first down for the Huskers. They trail 10 to nothing to the Latin Tigers. Sunberg gives it. Dubose coming against the green. Doug loses his footing a little bit as he makes contact with Jefferson number 12, but he's still got a first down at the 20, 31 of uh, LSU. He was close to popping that. Number 94, Michael Brooks, leads the team in sacks and tackles for losses. He has unusual speed. Watch the blow that he gives to Sandberg after he throws the ball. Mitchell was right there after he hands the ball off. Excuse me. See, he's getting a free ride into the backfield, though, because he's lined up over there with no tight end competition. He has a free rush. Notre Dame, if you remember, put a tight end, double tight end alignment over there, and they, kept, they controlled him pretty well. This is DuBose, shakes one behind the line, but can't shake three. John Hazard just missed him behind the line of scrimmage, but then came the flood, led by Ricky Chapman, 37, and number 97, Tommy Clapp. Doug DuBose also was an all-Big 8 selection. I think it's the first time that I can ever remember where one team had two all-conference backs playing the same position, Keith, not in the same backfield, Alternating a tailback, one rush for over 900, one for over 1,000 yards. Smith and DuBose. Second down and 10. Sunberg, little screen pass set up for DuBose. He's got a convoy. It's touchdown.
31 yards, and I want to tell you, you get four Huskers out in front of Doug Dubos, and it's all the mailman. How do you set up a screen? There's two key points. The lineman invites the defense to rush to the inside, letting them go out, the offensive lineman go out and form a wall of blockers. And the quarterback makes a good face looking down the field. You put two of them together, and you're going to have a successful play. And that was a pretty good execution of the screen pass, as we've seen all season. Line for the extra point. Hooked it, got it inside. And at 10.31 to go in the first half, Nebraska's on the scoreboard, now trailing by three, 10 to seven. Yep, when I saw those four people out in front of DuBose, I figured it was going to take a near miracle play by one of the Tigers to get it. Here we set up the screen. The defensive lineman rushes to the inside. Then the quarterback rolls to this side and tosses it back to the great runner, Doug Dubo. Look at the block that Keith was talking about. That offensive line, Doug Mara making a great car bar. Number 77 making a great play. And Dubo accelerating into the end zone. Now let's see it from a different angle. A fake roll to the left. All the defense moving in that direction. And then a throwback screen. That's not fair, Keith. Throwback screen could be outlawed for football. You execute it like that, there's no way to stop it. And the line did their part perfectly. Now the key to it was keeping Michael Brooks, the great linebacker, yep. number 94, off of the play. The third replay that we're going to see here, we'll see it after the kickoff. How they handled Brooks on that play. Brooks beating their great defensive player. So the Huskers a little in your face. And come back with a 70-yard touchdown march. And Sammy Martin will not try to return it, and they'll bring it out to the 20 where the Tigers will have it first down. Michael Brooks, number 94, has been free and clear most of the, the ball game so far. This way he likes to play, but when he gets a tight end or like Heimer, he has to play that position first. He's not as effective. He doesn't have the freedom, the range to do what he wants to do. Then he picks up Porter, number 36, keeps him off of the play just in time. Never have I seen any prettier execution of the throwback screen. And Keith, I'm not kidding. It's one of the toughest, toughest plays to defend in football. Particularly a team like the, on defense like uh, LSU that runs so effectively. They take the post now in just a few minutes of playing time, Frank. On that drive of two, two minutes and 40 seconds, DeBose accounted for 53 of the 70 yards. And the Nebraska defensive folks now trying to get their hackles up a little bit. And they jump into the action. Dalton Hilliard has some problems short of the line of scrimmage at the tw at the 19. Looks like he tripped over Kurt Gore. Uh, the his pulling own guard. guard. Yes, yep. the pulling guard. Uh, the little penetration, a little quick penetration forced Gore to pull back deep, and he uh, tripped up the ball carry Hilliard. Hilliard now nine carries and 19 yards in the game. Gary James is out there again. He keeps bouncing back after they drag him off the field. Rickersham runs one. Oh, he threw a bullet. And uh, Mitch Andrews, the tight end, couldn't pull it down. Let's see if he's got a hole in his chest. He really threw that thing hard. He gunned it into Andrews. Andrews is really a prototype tight end. Tight end is one of the toughest positions I always found to find because it has to be a combination block and has speed of a wide receiver. Well, Mitch Andrews has both. He's 235, 46 in the 40, has caught 24 passes this season. Out of character, key for him to drop it. He has excellent hands. Oh, it's that hard, though. <laughs> he did gun it in there. Either drop it or lose a long there. There's another bullet by Rickersham, except this time it is drilled into Herman Fontenot, and it's good for a first down out across the 30 at the 32. The Nebraska defensive linebackers a little bit scared to drop very deep because of Hitting and James coming out of the backfield. So it opens up that area behind the linebacker in front of the safety, and Fontenot comes right in front of him and catches it. Here's how he got open behind the linebackers and in front of the safety. He also was a running back as a freshman, moved the wide receiver, and has had a fine career. Here comes Gary James. Not much. Nebraska collectively are an outstanding defensive uh, front. They are number one in defense against scoring, number one in total defense, but Mark Munford is the main reason for this defensive team. Sophomore linebacker. Knows how to read the play. The coaches say that he knows how, to, but that's an outstanding play. He took on the block of Gordon, number 63, and still made the play. Not many linebackers, Keith, can do that. 
Well, he had a great ball game against was it Oklahoma. Oklahoma. Right? He yeah. certainly did. Weeks. Weighs 225, runs a 4-7, nose for the football. Number 41. Second down and eight. Ricochet goes big with it for McGee. He's got it. And he is down at the 16 of Nebraska. Got behind and beat Dave Burke. McGee is the fresh number 80. Has a 24-yard average per reception. He's the one that caught the Hail Mary pass against Notre Dame. A 60-yard or touchdown pass against Kentucky. Blazing speed. Has greatness written all over him. What concentration in behind the senior. Dave Burke, freshman, gets in behind him and makes the reception. 50 yards on the play. Mark it for 17. Wickersham stands up. A quick pop thrown behind Fontenot. Threw the ball behind him. Now Herman had his man in his pocket and was headed home for six, but Wickersham threw the ball behind him. Let's look how good the Nebraska defense is. Rushing, they are four. Passing, they are fifth. Only 124 yards a game. Total yardage, 203, number one in the nation. 9.5, number one. And we'll show you a little bit later what LSU has already done to those numbers, and we're just in the second quarter. Wickersham is 10 out of 16 for 166 yards. Eight and a half minutes to go in the first half. Pitch out comes. Close to the wide man, Gary James. And James is inside the 10. Steps out of bounds near the 9. Not too bad for a guy that's supposed to be half mortally wounded with a groin bolt. Keith, he's had that uh, kind of reputation all the time. He broke his hand on the weekend after the Kentucky ball, excuse me, after the Vanderbilt ball game. And the coaches don't know how. But uh, he held, was held out a couple of games. He's had a, a career with his had nagging injuries. He's a very talented young man. LSU ran the sweep. Nebraska had no force from the corner. Big game resulted. Here's Wickersham for the game. Already way ahead of the average. Got Rathjen and Martin now, and there's the setbacks. And Wickersham lost control of the snap. Never got away from center with it. Looked like the center followed the ball, uh, having realized uh, that it was loose. It was nigh. It was Kevin Langford, the guard, I guess, who saw it loose. Perhaps either the quarterback or the center yelled fumble. And Kevin came back to recover it, so it brings up fourth down and probably brings in Ronnie Lewis and does. Ronnie has kicked a 37-yarder already tonight. Box shows eight minutes to play. This is from 28 yards, and it will be out of the hold of Clay Parker, the punter. This puts it up. And nails it through there with a penalty flag on the field. So let's wait before we become exultant over the field goal time. Nailed the kicker against Nebraska. The penalty will surely be waved off. No, Keith, they, they will take it. The penalty will be uh, well, enough assessed for a first down? on the kickoff. Oh, they can either take it no, and give yes. them a first down. Yes, it will no, give okay. half, yeah, half the distance to the goal. I'm saying, is that enough for a first yeah, down? Yeah, I believe it is. Uh, it's seven, half the distance would put it just enough for a first down. They'll test it. The LSU will go up and say, mark it off and see if it's a first down. If it is, we may take the points off the board. If they don't and keep the points, the penalty will be assessed on the kickoff. Where but was the ball snapped from? The 12? The ball was snapped from the 12. Half the distance is six yards. Ooh, six. So the, ball, the first down mark is on the seven. It will be a first down. They'll ask the referee. To, they don't have to make a decision until the referee steps it off. To see if it is a first down. But shouldn't somebody go up and now get now he's yep. doing it? They're going to do that. Now they've already established that it is the first down. They're going to take the point off the board. First and foul. Rushing the kicker. Automatic first down. Dave Burke runs into him, I think. The reason you, we have this rule is a safety measure. Number 33 is coming from the left of your screen with a kicker not having time to regain his balance. Burke goes right into him, knocks him down. Clear violation. So it is first and goal from the six now. As LSU gets the penalty call against the Huskers. It's a first down by a yard, and Gary James tries to go to the corner, fumbles the ball, it goes out of bounds, and LSU will keep possession. Keith, if the ball, the ball was declared dead on the, before the fumble, had it not been, the fumble went out of the end zone, no, and it would have bounced. It bounced out of the end zone, and it would have been Nebraska's ball at the 20. You can see this great run for just a short yardage, but it's an excellent effort. Right here, the ball is knocked free. Now, how he called that? Oh, it, it went, went out, out of bounds. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought it went in the end no. zone. You're right. 
I thought it went out of bounds in the end zone. From a yard, second down. Wickersham gives it. James sticks his head in there and runs into a mix master. The There's a penalty flag thrown by the man across the way. One of the units, defensive or offensive units, is offside. It's an offside call. I couldn't tell which team. Well, this LSU team looks great. They are throwing that ball all over the field, putting Nebraska in defensive positions that they haven't been placed all season long. Once again, the passing teams have a big advantage, Keith, in the bowl. It was also an important thing, though, that they took that time when they were all messed up down there and about to blow an opportunity to score something. They did take the time to come over and sit down with Ernst Parker and company and Bill got everything organized, and they wound up getting the three points, and that means something in your first possession. Keith, you're exactly right, and as we looked at Bill Ernst Parker, who has he came to LSU. The, play, the defense was lined up in the neutral zone. In a very controversial situation, he kept his mouth shut and has done a great job. Now the quarterback trying to slide over the top with it, and I don't think Wickersham made it on second down and goal. He's got Rathjen and Martin lined up. Now this is a team, mind you, that has Dalton Hilliard and Gary James. And right now we're looking at Craig Rathjen and Sammy Martin. A freshman and a sophomore, when they've got two of the best runners probably in same backfield, James and Hilliard, of any team in the Southeastern Conference. James is coming back in. He's a good leaper. James can go over the top. But LSU doesn't have a formation that I know of that they can line up in to put the ball carrier over the top. Our formation is the best. Penalty flag stopping them before they can get the play into effective motion, and it's not the 25 second clock because there's still 12 seconds showing there. He, I saw some offensive men moving. Yep. Yep. <laughs> They're trying. What <laughs> happened is that the Nebraska challenged the neutral zone, which the defense can do as long as they get back before the snap, and the LSU lineman reacted Good to ball. that challenge. Ball start, Got offense, still second down. Down. Watch to the left of your screen. You can see Nebraska kind of make a little quick charge and get back, and I believe it's the left end of the left guard. Over. You can see the left end, the left tackle, both, yeah, both jumped up. Yes. Yeah. This is a passing down. Second board. down and goal from the six. Gary James is held at the three. So will bring a third down and goal. Well, they've got their big opportunity on the rough and the kicker call against Nebraska and got the first down at uh, the six. But since then, they've just been sort of punching at windmills. Well, Keith, one thing that they don't, the LSU offense does not have is a Powell tackle play, which is the best play you can run on the goal line. A Powell tackle play or over the top. They, uh, east, west, uh, east, sideways offense, and uh, it's hard to score sometimes. The ball is on the two, the third and goal. Roll out pass. Wickersham got nobody to throw it to. Now he comes in and it's incomplete. Finally, Fontenot was able to get over there. But number 10 uh, and number 33 were both waiting for him, and Burke knocked it down. In 60, uh, 64 times that LSU had the ball in four-down territory, they were only able to run it in 24 times. Well, Here why again, in the world don't you put in a power play? I don't, uh, ask the coach, Steve. I would have something that I could go over the top besides the single back offense. Now, when they line up in their tight formation, it's still an east-west offense. They run. It's a delayed all-tackle play. Nebraska defense gets too quick for them to run it in. They've had this field goal once. That's what we had to do. 19 yards. They missed, missed it. Holy mackerel. I don't believe it. <laughs> it's incredible. They had three points in the books. Got a first and goal from the six. They wound up with nothing. Well, LSU is still leading 10-7 to 7 after that comedy. Keith, I still would have taken the points off the board, leading oh, by over three sure. points. So if, I, I, if the score had been tied, I would never have taken the points off. But a three-point lead, another field goal gives them six. That's not enough. Nope. This ball game. Nope. 
and that'll give some confidence to the Nebraska defensive folk, and they're tough enough as it is. And this play is inside up across the 25 to the 26 with Scott Porter carrying the ball. Nebraska averaging about 39 plays per half on the regular season, and so far tonight they've had only 16. Well, Super Bowl 19, here it comes. Free game coverage will go and go and go and go, starting at 4 o'clock, 3 o'clock Central, and 1 o'clock Pacific time. And we'll have everything for you. Free game jitters, that includes the first hiccup, I'll guarantee you. There isn't going to be a thing missed in bringing you up to the Super Bowl game of 1985. It's on ABC and comes out of the Stanford Stadium in Palo Alto, California. Keith, who do you think is going to be in there? I know that uh, the favorites of Marino and Montana. I'm not sure. I, know, I would say San Francisco at the moment would be your favorite team, but they've got enough trouble with the Chicago Bears. Well, I, think it's, I think it's great after all these years that ABC is finally doing the Super Bowl. Third down and a yard and a half. And here's the first down play as DuBose pops it big, slashing it back through the middle and reaches the 37 for the first down. Here's the power that Nebraska has used a big offensive line, averaging about 260, all senior. Scott Porter, number 36, makes the key block on the linebacker. And Dubo shows his quickness. He darts through the hole and makes the big run out of what ordinarily would have been a short yardage play. He's quick. Boy, he's a he good looking back. First down, all near the 37. Tigers leading by three, 10 to seven. Dubo looked like he might want to put the ball up on an option pass play. But that was taken away from him, and he turned it back inside for a yard or so. Michael Brooks, number 94, can be one of the great linebackers that LSU's ever had. He's going to fight off the block of the tight end. There he is, using his hand. Then he takes on the block of the pulling guard. Now what does he do? He goes right after the ball carrier and makes the tackle on Dubo. Two blockers, and he still makes the tackle. The one of this Ohio sophomore. Ruston, Louisiana. Second down, still about 10. Sunberg lobs it outside, and here comes DeVose to the 45. He'll need two more yards to keep it. Sean Burks made that tackle, and Burks is a returning player for the Tigers. He's a junior. These LSU linebackers have outstanding speed. Getting out on the option play after the fake inside is a good indication of the line. The speed of Burks, number 57, the leading tackler, 108 for the season. 3.50 and counting in the first half. Remaining 10 7, LFU. DuBose and the Huskers have their first down. Nebraska Frank is gaining a little momentum now. Well, we talked about uh, the offensive running game, just needs time to to get going again. That contact work, they look sluggish beginning, which we talked about. Now they begin to pick up. Those linemen are getting their timing. The execution looks better, and Dubose looks outstanding. That was an awfully big series. They needed to move it out from that goal line, that 20-yard line, and get some running room and some air. I mean, that series where LSU had three oh, yeah. oh, oh, absolutely. Off and away and absolutely. <laughs> Jefferson, the fine defensive back to LSU with five interceptions, not in the ball game. I don't know whether he's hurt or not. Ball is on the 47 with the first down play. They take it up in the middle. Scott Porter, senior out of Nebraska City. And they're going to mark this ball just to the 49 of LSU. Pick up on this play One of the strengths of Tom Osmond's success, I think, is his signal call. I think he's used one of the best on first down. He has a consistent pattern of running the plays and give him a chance at a big play on first down. He does it nearly to perfection. Sunberg's pass to the sidelines. Could never have thrown it. It's intercepted by Jeffrey Dale. He threw it into double coverage, and the up man Dale picks it off. The rush on Sunberg was the key. Look at the right of your screen. I couldn't tell who it was. It could be Dupar. Number two. No, it's Brooks again, Brooks. number 94, showing his ability to sidestep the blocker, force the throw, and Keith is exactly right. He should not have thrown the ball. Single man receiver, two defensive man. Advantages lies with the defense. Two minutes and 45 seconds to go in the first half. The Tigers have it back at good field position. Okay. 
Number, Michael Brooks. Number 94 is a big playmaker. Every defense needs one that can stop a drive. Nebraska moving down the field, made some first downs, getting some momentum. You need a player like Michael Brooks who has that quickness and acceleration to come up with a big play and the turnover. And on first down, Wickersham from the 31, guns it. Complete to Fontenot. And Herman is on the Nebraska side of the field near the 46. Who was that team around in front? Brooks, to make that Burke. Uh, Burke, the defensive back, went around the receiver, as he mentioned, and he missed the ball. He should have gone through the receiver, arrived at the same time the ball, and it would have been an in incomplete pass. Burke is a senior. His progress has been good. Has two interceptions, but he made a mistake there. First down near the 46. Ricochet got all day. Lops the ball out to 43. Garland Jean Baptiste, and Jean Baptiste carries the ball to about the 43. That is not a mispronunciation. His last name in total is Jean Dash Baptiste. I just called him number 43. <laughs> First name is Garland. Look at the yardage that LSU has picked up on this number one defensive ranked team in the country, Nebraska. Second down and seven. But look at the time Ricochet is getting. That's Raskin. Not much there. Ball comes squirting loose. And the Nebraska jumps on it. Craig Rapton on his way down as the ball slapped away from him and Ken Graber jumps all over it. And the Cornhuskers get it right back with a minute and 40 seconds to play in the first half. As Keith mentioned, the one thing that LSU has had, commodity, is pass protection. He's looking at the receiver. He finally gets it out to Rapton. Number nine is Strasburger, wraps him up, spins around, and then I guess that... Chad Dapper knocked it loose. Dapper knocked it loose, and uh, they were covered it, and Nebraska has the ball. We've got a new quarterback in the lineup now for the Nebraska Cornhuskers. Travis Turner has come in, a bigger and perhaps stronger player, and considered a better runner. Travis Turner is in there now with the Huskers trailing by three in a minute and 40 seconds to play in the first half. Owning the ball first down at the 14. And they hand the ball up the middle with Jeff Smith on a carry. And on that little delay, which is so typical and so noticeable in the offensive formation for Nebraska, he picks up a, almost five yards on the play. Travis Turner has started the last six ball games after Sunberg was injured. And he is a better runner, a good option runner, but he's kind of a street fighter, a tough man, young man. Back to throw it. Shoots it up the middle, throws it behind the receiver off his hands and right into the hands of Lifford Hopley. Hopley is on his knees, praying that uh, that a receiver does not come down with the ball. And the receiver goes in slots and catches it, Frankie Walker. He, he goes in. Hobley, the outstanding All-American, All-Conference safety man, number 29, slips. As Keith mentioned, he's on his knees right there. The ball comes right to him, and it's his seventh interception of the season. Once again, Nebraska's weak point is the passing game. But you can see Swanson, number 17, the wing back, coming across in behind the linebackers. The ball is deflected, thrown behind him. The ball is high. He, when you deflect the high pass, it goes up in the air and is usually intercepted. That Swanson's a tough nut, too. You get him out there one-on-one, -on -one and he'll hurt you. Here's the screen play now, set up for Garland Jean Baptiste. But Nebraska is not having any of it. And it's going to be right about the line of scrimmage on the tackle, where it was first down and 20, first down and 10 from the 28. It is second down. Mark Munford was the man that messed it up for the Huskers. LSU said, Nebraska, if you can run a throwback screen, I will, too. But it wasn't successful like Nebraska. He's looking for Martin. He's got him at the 40. Boy, he's a good receiver. What a great catch he made. Anytime you throw the ball over 10 yards downfield, the receiver must expect to get hit. And Martin was collisioned by the cornerback Harris the moment he caught the ball, but he held it. LSU trying to hustle it on down the field and get the field goal range. There's a good catch by Carlos Jean Batiste to keep control of the ball. And he picks up close to six yards on the carry, so it'll be second down, and timeout is called with a half a minute to play. And while we're waiting, let's have a look at the Nebraska Kemps. 
The University of Nebraska-Lincoln, one of the nation's foremost land-grant universities, serves more than 25,000 students, including Nebraska's largest number of merit scholars. In research, UNL is a pioneer in discovery and technology, with model programs in video disc and agricultural information, and internationally respected faculty, including two of the newest members of the National Academy, bring the excitement of new knowledge into classrooms and extension services. The University of Nebraska-Lincoln, building excellence for America's future. LSU now, we've got it, one timeout remaining. Rickersham, 16 out of 23 in the first half. Big first half for Jeff, 211 yards. One thing that is a little surprising, Nebraska blitzes repeatedly, but they have not been able to sack Rickersham on any of his passing attempts. In fact, to the contrary, the LSU line has given the quarterback Rickersham plenty of time to choose his receivers. You can see what he has done so far. Nebraska has been allowing only 124 yards passing per game, fifth in the nation. It's second down, about four and a half, but that's not the matter. The matter is only a half minute remains to play. LSU leads 10 to 7. They'd like to get in a field goal position. Ricochet looking all over the place and running all over the place and finally unloads it. And the pass is good and appears to be a first down. It's on the Nebraska side of the field to Mitch Andrews and he slides out of our vision but he has enough for the first down so that stops your clock with 22 seconds and uh, LSU hustles out there now to be ready to go when they finally get the change down and wind the clock Tom Osmond was looking very worried and he has every right to be because this offense of LSU has the speed and the special skill position to hurt Nebraska Ricochet down the middle he won't get that one back it is intercepted by number 41 Mark Munford Oh, you don't think he is going to be a great player? Rickersham had seven in a row. He tried to force one down the middle, intended for Eric Martin. And Munford, a linebacker, mind you, is 22, three yards down the field to make the interception. He's watching the quarterback. He never takes his eyes off the quarterback. He breaks in front of the receiver, and he, the ball hits his chest, his arm bounces up. He cradles it in to stop the drive of LSU. Third interception for Mark Munford, the sophomore linebacker. 16 seconds to go now. And Turner, they'll give it away to Mil uh, Smith. And Smith uh, windmills his way up the field. And they're just going to run it out now and go to the clubhouse. No, they call timeout. Nebraska had three timeouts remaining. I was wondering why they wouldn't go ahead and use one. So the Huskers with the ball talking, trailing by three. And here's the LSU campus. Louisiana State University and Agricultural and Mechanical College. Located in Baton Rouge, the student population is fast approaching 30,000. Undergraduate degrees are offered in 133 areas, with doctoral degrees offered in 49 major fields. An eminent faculty adds to the distinction of the state's comprehensive university. Ongoing research in over 1,000 areas ensures a better tomorrow for all of us. A quality education is the major thrust of the Quest for Quality program at Louisiana State University. Just six seconds as Nebraska called the time to have one more play. It'll probably be just send everybody as deep as you can get them and throw the ball as far as you can and see what happens. Because it will not end on a penalty. Against the defense. Second down three. That matters. This is the last play. Nothing good. No, indeed. Michael Brooks took care of that. The looping outside the linebacker, in effect defensive end, comes in to make the hit of the tackle. And at halftime, the score is 10 to 7. LSU leads Nebraska, and here's Tim Brandt now. All right, Keith, I'm with head coach Bill Arnsparker. And the first thing I want to ask, I know hindsight is always 20-20, but are you second-guessing yourself on taking the points off the board? No. The mistake I made, I think, was not taking a, a five-yard penalty and giving our field goal kicker a better angle. Uh, and I, you know, that was my fault. Uh, that's, uh, you know, but I didn't do it, so I, we can't look back. We made some errors that uh, we shouldn't have made that uh, hurt us when we were not at practice for five or six weeks. But, uh, you know, we, we just got to keep uh, working and doing the things we can. And, uh, you know. It's your philosophy, and I know that you're happy with it. You've been very successful with it. But I want to ask you about your goal line offense. You stay with that one back scheme. Why don't you have that, that power blast or tackle? Well, play? Are you coaching now? Are you just in your hands for me? <laughs> You know, we do what we try to do best, okay? All right, All right, Bill. Well, I had to ask him. We asked that question earlier. We'll be back with our halftime activities after this commercial message and a word 
from your local station. Stay with us. <laughs> Frank, as to what you feel may happen, or what do you think has to happen in order for, one, LSU to keep leading, or Nebraska to get the lead? Number one, uh, Nebraska has got to be, find some way to get some pressure applied to the quarterback, Rickersham, to stop their passing attack. That's the one thing that they look better than Nebraska in one area. And also, Nebraska got to establish their running game. We talked earlier, I think the second half, the running game will pick up, and that's what Tom, I'm sure, will want to believe that he can do is run right at the, the LSU defense. Make one uh, comment relative to uh, the play down here where Bill Arnsparger decided to take the three points off the board and take the first down and goal at the sixth. There was no other decision the man could make. He had to make that decision. The reason is he was led by three points. Another field goal only puts him six points. He gets the first down on the six-yard line. you got to believe and be confident enough to your team that you can take it in from the six-yard line. They didn't, and uh, that was the reason they'd be second-guessed, I guess. I guess second-guessing is just part of coaching anyhow. And if your skin is too thin for second-guessing, you ought to get another business in it. And I don't imagine it's going to bother Bill a whole lot. So we're ready to go now with the second half of play. One of the nice things about the local PCAs is that they are. Both sides of the ball. It got a little confused a couple of times, but generally speaking, played well. And here comes Nebraska now with Jeff Smith returning the kickoff. The Huskers had the option to start the second half, and obviously they chose the ball. Here are the highlights out of the first half. Highlights. First, it was LSU scoring on this play as Wickersham gave the ball to Hilliard. Dalton Hilliard. Yeah. Little opening, right, little cross buck on the goal line, held the middle linebacker, and he wasn't able to support. Good blocking by the left side of the, of the uh, LSU line. Then the throwback screen, perfectly executed by the lineman and the quarterback, setting up. Back to live action for a moment here as Nebraska. Fires on first down from the 23, gets a couple of yards on the play. Let's go back to the touchdown play. Beautifully executed screen. Nebraska lineman invited the LSU to rush inside, setting up the throwback. Look at the offensive lineman. Four of them, big fellows right out in front, giving Dubose a little crack, and he accelerated into the end zone. And it's right now, second down and about seven. Sunberg opens a quarterback and a penalty flag. So it looked like Schnitzler was shielded away from following the route that he wanted to go uh, by Kevin Guidry and immediately brought a flag out. Guidry, however, was the man who went down. Let's see about it. Guidry hit collision the receiver before the ball arrived. Uh, it seemed to me that the, ref, the official was right on top of it. And he's trying to decide whether it's a 15-yard penalty or first down. It's less than 15 yards, so it's a first down right there. We have two penalties on pass defense now. Pass interference. John Hazard, defensive defense. end for LSU, weighs in at 265. Tommy Clapp is the nose guard at 260, a redshirt freshman. Carl Wilson, 250-pound sophomore. Greg Dubrock, a linebacker, senior 220. Inside backer is uh, Sean Burks, uh, 220. Back to the live action. Pitch out to Jeff Smith. Smith around the corner, picks up six yards on the carry. Well, they're hustling right along here. Nebraska is starting uh, the second half with its the ball at its possession. The secondary, Kevin Guidry is a corner. That man just got flagged. The other corner is Norman Jefferson, uh, 5'11", 175. The strong safety is Jeffrey Dale, 6'4", 210, and Lifford Hobley, the free safety at 6'1", 200. The other linebackers being Sean Burks, Ricky Chapman, and Michael Brooks. We have a chance to show you them. For second down and a short four now for Nebraska from their own 42 and the ball inside to Rathman the fullback and he's got a first down as far as yardage is concerned but there's a piece of laundry laying out there colored yellow look like number 94 Brooks no I guess Brooks uh, looks like he stepped across but he got back and caused motion by the offense tough break for Nebraska instead of second down and four it's going to be second down and nine the two eye backs for the Cornhuskers, uh, Smith had nine carries for 45 yards in the first half, and Doug DuBose, who didn't play all that much, had eight carries for 45 yards. The offensive unit reflected there. That's the same unit that started the ball game, and the same for the big people up front. <coughs> Three All-Americans in that offensive line, Griminger, Benning, and Franovich, all made at least one All-American team. It's second down and eight and a half or so. A Smith tries to get around the corner. 
And Carl Wilson will have none of it. LSU playing three down linemen and Wilson at 6'5", 250. Sophomore out of Baton Rouge just wrapped those big strong arms around him and slammed him down on the ground. Look at these stats. The success of the LSU offense. Total yards, 295, and that's not artificial. The LSU offense just out-executed the number one defense in the country in that first half. Two turnovers apiece. Third down and six. Sundberg with the noise plummeting down on him throws an interception. Jeffrey Dale scoops it right up off the grass. The pass intended for Todd Crane. They're waving it off. They Fisher, didn't control yeah. it. I thought he had it. Well, it looked like he did. The ball officials are claiming was trapped. Throws a crossing pattern. Crane is coming across from the tight end, trying to get in behind the linebacker. You can see how open he is right there. Now the ball is deflected. It goes up. Dale number four. No, it hit. He trapped it. He trapped it, and it didn't complete. Good call Good by the pitch. Fourth down. Norman Jefferson drops as uh, Scott Livingston comes in to punt. 48 and 37 on his two punts today. That's really a high hanger. And a fair catch called by Jefferson up around the 25. With 13-17 to go in the third quarter, and LSU leading 10-7, the Tigers get the ball at their 25. LSU comes in now with Sammy Martin and Garland Jean Baptiste as the setbacks. Gary James has hobbled some, and Dalton Hidgard has been rather quiet so far in the game. And here's LSU now with its first possession of the second half. Tigers lead by three. This is Martin outside. Good speed. And he only had Burke to get by and score himself a 75-yard touchdown, but Dave Burke was able to hold him down. There is absolutely no substitute for speed. And you can see that Martin has blazing speed. Nebraska compressed their defense. Martin breaks outside. Mark Ken misses. He picks up a good block from Fontenot, who's the best blocking wide receiver that LSU has, giving him extra yardage for the big game. On the 48 of Nebraska, first down as Brickersham on a delay, hands it over to Martin, and uh, Martin runs it down to about the 45, and I apologize for the hacking and the sound that's coming through, but I've had my troubles with the Burgers of winter lately. Bill Weber is the defensive end, Spockman a tackle at 260 for the Huskers, Graver the nose guard, 245. Stuckey, a 245-pound, already admitted to the Harvard Graduate School of Business. Scott Strasberger, the other defensive end, 205. Dalma linebacker, Mark is 235, and Mark Munford, a 225 pounds. I've been saying, Frank, people asking how the health is. I told him I quit smoking, quit drinking, the next day I almost died. <laughs> Keith had a terrible case of the flu. <laughs> Came close to not being here. 45-yard line, second down and seven. Keith, the camel, the center was injured and has been replaced by the backup center. That being Nacho Albergamo. And here comes Mr. Martin. Sammy Martin, a freshman from New Orleans, 5'11", 185, showing his spurs as he picks up a first down outside the 35. Well, at halftime, it's my understanding that it's a 14-14 ball game between Washington and Oklahoma, and here it's 10-7, LSU leading Nebraska. So these are the two games remaining in the bowl season for 1984 and 85. And that pass was thrown very hard by Wickersham and off the hands of the intended receiver. LSU has been so impressive in this ball game. Every time, every possession, they made at least one first down. They've moved the ball up and down the field more than any team in Nebraska's face this year and had trouble getting in the end zone as Nebraska kind of stiffened a little bit. Nebraska's only made one real serious drive. And they took it in for the touchdown. They've held their edge in uh, offensive uh, time. To, oh, look at this. The Wickersham tried to force one in the middle, and there was no chance as Chad Daffer, the linebacker, was just standing there, and Jeff Wickersham hit him right on the numbers, and he is intercepted. So the Huskers pick off one at 11.43 to go in the third quarter, trailing by three points to LSU. Yep. 
Let's have another look at the interception from the end zone view. Right after this play, with 11.43 to go in the third quarter. Nebraska trailing LSU by three. Doug DuBose is now the eye back on the first down from the 32. And uh, DuBose keeps it. It looked almost as if uh, Sundberg had the option there as he hips the ball back, but he decided to give it away to DuBose. Let's look and see if Wickersham was screened off by the umpire. The bottom of your screen on the left is the umpire, and it looked like that Wickersham could not see the defender as he finally looks back over to the right, and the ball goes right over his head. I don't believe that he saw number 40, Daffer, coming in front and intercepting the ball. The umpire has to be there, though. He's got to be somewhere, Keith. <laughs> He's part of the equipment. Second down and six, and into the middle goes Tom Ruffman. The full back and across the 40 to the 41. That leaves him a couple of yards short of the first down. Nebraska should get some momentum from that interception. LSU took the first possession, was moving for a score, apparently score, and threw for the interception. That should give new life to this Nebraska offense, which has not been as effective as they've been all year long. LSU defense has played very well. Short yardage. Third and two. Close. And it is close. According to the spot. LSU defense are taking some extreme measures to try to stop this Nebraska offense. Gave him the first time without even a measure. By getting up and crowding the line of scrimmage, it seems like on first down, Keith, that LSU has 10 men lined up within five yards of the line of scrimmage to really try to force Nebraska into the weakest part of their offense, the passing game. Remember that little short slant tight end pass that Nebraska used to use? Yes. Go for a mile, wouldn't it? Now they move, LSU moves back. Go! Misdirection here with Dubose, the eye back. But uh, he was seven yards deep, and by the time he took the two steps to the right and then came back, the grain had changed. <laughs> That's a good way to express because Norm Jefferson, number 12, and Dubrock, number 44, reacted beautifully and cornered uh, Dubose and really threw him to the ground. And he's kind of limping off a little bit right there. You see 11 rushes, 52 yards. He's been averaging. Uh, a little over 100 yards, just, uh, just under 100 yards, 98 per, per game. Gained a yard, second down, nine. Sunberg gets time, throws, pass caught, Swanson, first down for Shane and the Huskers near the 37 of LSU. Interesting career Craig Sunberg has had. Was recruited, Keith, the same year as Turner Gill. He knew he couldn't beat out Turner Gill. He stayed there, worked, and learned. Tom Osmond says he knows more about the offense than any quarterback he's ever coached. He's a na native of uh, Lincoln, Nebraska. Swanson, number 17, the wing back, the steer wrestler, state champion, a tough young man, a real solid football player, makes the reception. From near the 37, Sunberg keeps it. Fumbles it out of bounds. Looked like he might have been thinking about laddering it, but after Dale belted him, it became academic and it was fumbled out of bounds. Keith, it was a, he was pitching the ball and they called it a forward. First time we've seen it called, the lateral to the trailing back was a forward pass beyond the line of scrimmage and it will be loss of down and a penalty. Some of the things that we talked about during the season, Keith, on option plays where the quarterback pitches late. Let's watch it again. How can you call it a forward, though? Because the, it's beyond the line of scrimmage and the ball that. goes forward. Now watch. You, well, watch the hit. Okay, the hit's right there. Now when he pitches the ball, the official says that it's a forward pass beyond the line, five-yard penalty from the spot, and loss of down. The umpire calls it. First time I've seen that call. You know, we talked about it at some other option teams during the season. As we look at Tom Osmond, who's admired and respected as much as any football coach in America. Second down and eight now. Sunberg goes outside to Smith, gets a block on the corner, and gets a first down. Of the 26-yard line of LSU. Two studs ran together on the option play. Raffman, the fullback, 235, and Dale, the cornerback, number four. And Raffman got a tie to the right of your screen on the option play. The pitch back to Smith. Watch the block right here. Raffman, number 26, 
and on, excuse me, on 27, I thought he was on Dale, on 27, Gentry gets a tie. Smith goes into the secondary for the first down. 26 of LSU. Sunberg rolls out, throws, pass, caught by number 94, Brian Heber. And Heber is inside the 10 first and goal for Nebraska. And as the Huskers move it down the field, some of the red bunting is falling from the sky. Keith, the, the counter sweep bootleg is the toughest pass that I have ever tried to defend. I think most coaches would agree. Misdirection pass, tight end across, open, good throw by Sunberg. First and goal from the nine. Sunberg still got it. Going to keep it now and score. Well, first time that Nebraska has been on top. As the Huskers take a 13-10 lead with their successful conversion here by Klein, they'll go up to a four-point lead at 8.14 to go in the third quarter. It's good. If they, Nebraska repeated the play, it's a counter sweep bootleg where the ref Sunberg is going to roll out, but watch the center, Trainowitz, number 57. He kind of creeps out the line of scrimmage as a personal protector screams off Dale, and Sunberg makes a great effort and goes in for the touchdown. Now, what set it up? The block on Brooks, number 94. Brooks has containment. Bradford, number 26, 235, wraps his arm around him a little bit. Hard to contain and get out of that. Then his leg trips in two penalties on that key, but it got him down anyway. <laughs> And Nebraska takes the lead, and we'll be right back. Well, it's going to be interesting to see now whether or not Tom Osborne was prophetic when he talked about conditioning. Fourth quartering, 8.14 to go in the third. Nebraska on top, 14 to 10. And coming with it, Sammy Martin. He looks like he's going to be a dandy, the freshman from New Orleans. He's got a burst, and you know, speed mm -hmm. that uh, makes everybody else look like they're running in molasses. Yep. How, how many times have we seen in college football where a team looks like they're moving in to score, having success, turn the ball over, and the mist of momentum shift over, and Nebraska takes and looks like their champion team and move right down the plays, nine plays, 67 yards for a touchdown. But the history of these two teams, mind you, very close. 21-20 the last time they met, 1983 in the Orange Bowl. Dalton Hilliard and Gary James are in the backfield, and this is Hilliard. And Dalton gets from the 26 out to about the 28. Wickersham, the quarterback, with James and Hilliards playing sometime. Not a lot. They're not in there. They're not the dominating personalities. Eric Martin and Herman Fontenot are the white people with Andrews, Harold Gore, Campbell, Langford Smith. Somewhat surprised that Hilliard and James aren't playing as much. They're playing those other substitute backs more than any time this year. There's a little flip lob to the right side, and they were trying to break Fontenot on it. And number 90 stepped up in there and took everything away from the play. Scott Strasburger, and if Scott had been looking, it would have been an interception. Strasburg knew what was coming, Keith. You can tell. Watch him move out to the right. He heard the audible. Number 90 moving out. Of course, he's a 3.8 student and pre-med. It's been given a proposed graduate scholarship. Watch Rob. He heard the key. You can see him disguise his coverage, and he runs out. He knows it's a pass, but he couldn't get to it. The ball was thrown behind him. So it's third down and the short eight. Wickersham goes down the middle, throws an interception at midfield. Chad Deffer gets his second of the ball game, and it is the third time that Wickersham has been intercepted. Daffa is a substitute on situation. He has dropped back. He, what, what, five, he was back 25 yards. Seldom, seldom do you see a linebacker. Number 46. Watch it. A little fake. Now he turns and he's picking up the tight end. He's shadowing the tight end right there. 
and he jumps up like a receiver and catches the ball for the interception. Wickersham's last five passes, two incompletes and three interceptions. Remember, he told you he was a streak passer. Option, Smith. <laughs> Jeff Smith. <laughs> the hard back trying to throw a pass. And he never did get a hold of the thing. And Scott Campbell is down the sidelines all by himself. And Jeff just simply never got a hold of it to throw it down field. Campbell was 25 yards, see, like 20 <laughs> yards behind every LSU player. <laughs> There's Daffler, number 46, second interception, setting up the touchdown drive on the last possession and giving Nebraska another chance. Jeff needs a smaller ball. Smith goes over the right side, and he has a head-on collision with Sean Burke's number 57. And I mean, <laughs> you could feel it up here. Watch this collision. This is what we call a perfect tackle and a good run by the ball carriers. The headgears are going to collide right there. The two headgears hit head-on. Burks being the bigger throws Smith to the ground. Third down and seven. Outside Smith. Caught from behind by Dubrock, 44. And it brings up fourth down as we check in with Tim Brandt. Keith, the LSU coaches have been talking to Jeff Wickersham. Now, you know, well aware of the fact that he had that big first half. He was reading the defenses extremely well. He was hot. But you also mentioned that he's a streak passer. And the coaches are trying to keep his confidence up because right now, after the last two interceptions, he seems like his confidence is really down. They're talking to him just to read the defenses. Be more careful because the line is picking up the blitzes. Scott Livingston is in the punt now. Wickersham is continuing on that, has thrown for 30 interceptions, 17 in sophomore year, and 13 this year. Now three more, 16. 15-yard line, fair catch by Jefferson, LSU's ball. They trail 14 to 10, 6.03 to play, third quarter. That was a 29-yard punt. From the 15, LSU goes to work with quarterback Jeff Wickersham in a bit of a wobble right now. Yesterday, Tom Osborne had this comment about him. Well, he's been very impressive what we've seen of him. I think they have good, uh, a good complimentary cast. Their offensive line is good. They're certainly Dalton Hilliard and James are great running backs. Uh, they catch the ball well coming out of the backfield. They have good receivers. So uh, we think their skilled players as a whole are probably the best that we've seen this year. We think Hilliard's the best running back we've seen. So uh, I think our defense will be tested uh, probably more severely than at any time this year. Right so far. On first down from just outside the 15, Wickersham gives the ball to Hilliard. Whoa, there's a hit. Wacko at about the 16 by Bill Weber. Weber and uh, Strasburger are the defensive ends for Nebraska. They're not very big. They played almost as if they're linebackers, really. And I think that's sort of the function they perform. It looks to, look to me like, Frank, they're outside linebackers. They, Weber just jumped inside. He's so smart. He's been a starter for three years. All comp, all big eight. Outstanding player. Wickersham back to throw. Goes outside to Hilliard. He's got Fontenot to help him a little bit. But not enough as they get him at around the 18-yard line. The pattern that Wicker Sam just threw was a confidence builder behind the line, Keith. One of the great uh, television sports series of all time, the Professional Bowlers Tour, begins uh, its winter season live from Union City, California at 3 Eastern, 2 Central Time this coming Saturday. Seen at 3 o'clock on the West Coast with Chris Schenkel and Nelson Burton Jr. Long yardage is a blitzing down for Nebraska. Let's see if they come. Third and seven, the pass is away intended for Gary James, and it is no good. So Nebraska should get very good field position on this one. Nebraska defense has adjusted to the passing. Two interceptions already this pass. Three by Wickersham for the ball game. Ties a Sugar Bowl record by any pass. Swanson and Smith dropped for Nebraska. And Nebraska is very effective, Chief, for returning punts. Third in the nation. Both Swanson and Smith are very dangerous. Well, it was Swanson's uh, punt return that broke their game open against Oklahoma State. Burrow was tied 3-3 three three when he did it. Low kick. Can't get to it. And it takes a Nebraska bounce. And contact is finally made by an LSU man up around the 48 on the LSU side of the field. So it's only a 32-yard punt by Clay Parker. 
when they needed a bomb and didn't get it. Now the LSU defense, the character of their team has really got to come to the top now. Nebraska has the momentum, field position, everything, the lead going their way. Let's see what LSU can do. Look at the turnaround that Wickersham has had. Unbelievable. He is a straight passer. We've known that. The LSU coaches admit that. DeBose behind Rattler. And Sunberg, the quarterback with DeBose the ball. Well, good defensive effort there by LSU. They stop him after about a three-yard pickup. Norman Jefferson leading the tacklers. The cornerback coming up the force in a hurry. But this is Nebraska's best field position for a start of possession in this ballgame. Normally, most teams, when they start with the ball inside the 50, Keith will score, put points on the board about 60% of the time. They're in four-down territory in the first series, and that's one of the main reasons. Sunberg looking around, either he didn't have the people that he wanted or LSU was doing something on defense that he had not seen or didn't expect, so he calls timeout. 4.09 to play in the third quarter. Tim Brandt back at the Sugar Bowl and on the Nebraska side of the field, most of the attention right now is going to defensive end Bill Weber. He injured his shoulder on the last defensive series. He calls it a stinger. He hit a nerve. He can't lift his arm, so they're very concerned. He's trying to keep it mobile now. Basically just trying to keep his hands keep down on his sides and on his hips. They would feel his loss. Immediately, I would think. Right now, second down and six for the Husker. Here, the LSU 44. That's that delay with DuBose breaking into the secondary and... Finally hauled down around the 39. He got five yards, five yards plus on that carry. Just short, however, I think of his first down. Jeffrey Dale came up and collisioned the play and made the tackle. 6'4", 210. These uh, people who play in the defensive secondary for LSU are all pretty good size, with the exception of Jefferson, uh, 5'11", 175 for Norman. The rest of them are big horses, especially those two safeties. That's right, Keith. Hobbley's All-American as a safety, and Dale has had a fine career. As a strong safety. Third and one. DuBose gets his first down. Greg Dubrock dragging him out of bounds. Harry Griminger, number 58, the pulling guard, made the key block that let DuBose break into the secondary. These Nebraska linemen are big and strong. They are fourth and fifth year players, but they know this offense. They could run it in their sleep. Tom Osmond has a system. He doesn't deviate from it. Stays with it. First down at the 32 of LSU. That's Rathman. And Tom the fullback to about the 28 where he's greeted by Michael Brooks. Michael Brooks is... Brooks. Plays the defensive end. He's all over the field, but Burke's number 57 moves right in and made the play. Here he is, number 57, the junior, the captain, the leader of this defense, the one who really calls the signals, fires them up, tries to make them make the big play, and he shoots the gap inside, Keith, to make the play. I bet the only way he could have done it. Four yard pickup, second down, six. Sunberg goes out, bad pitch to Dubos, but he gets a good bounce. And turns it back for a first down. There is, however, a penalty flag. Keith, I don't know whether we could ever get a shot of it, but Trainer Witts, the center, snapped the ball so quickly. Holding Nebraska. That he looks all sides. But I think that's a key point that Nebraska has discovered to let him snap the ball and make his keeper. Watch the center. Watch how quick he gets out ahead of everybody else. See, he's moved. No one else has moved because the defensive men are keying the lineman in front of them, and this gives the son of the big advantage and the reason they've had all Americans, Remington and now Trader with. A fumble on the option play, but the ball bounces right back up to Dubos, but it called back for a penalty. Well, that fits, I think, somewhat into what Tommy Prothro used to do with his quarterbacks especially when Gary Beban was yeah. uh, at UCLA for Tommy. He had Beban swinging a leg as he accepted the ball from center, so that Gary was already moving. Gave him a jump on everybody else. The Nebraska center, I think, does it purposely. 
on second down. And long after the holding call, down the middle, Swanson was wide open, and Sunberg just simply didn't get the ball to him in time. Dale knocked it down, but Dale's action in the play is really inconsequential because if Sunberg gives uh, Swanson the ball in time, he scores. Here's what happens. He, Sunberg aimed it. He's so wide open. He said, I want to put the ball in there with touch, and he slows Swanson down, giving Dale the chance. Something that Sunberg, a fifth-year senior, getting his first chance this year after sitting on the bench behind Turner Gill for three years, he just wanted to ease it in there rather than throw it in there. Cost him a touchdown. It's third down and long. Third down and about 18. Sunberg sets up the throw again, gets it away. The pass is going to be intercepted by number 29, Lippert Hobley. And Hobley is going to come back outside the 20 to the 21. Penalty now flag. Penalty flags all over the place. Late hitting, it looked like. A little bit of frustration on the Nebraska lineman uh, or the players. Hobley makes his seventh, eighth interception of the season. He's an All-American safety. Played starting for LSU for three years. Pass was intended for Jim Thompson, but it wasn't anywhere near it. The ball was fully thrown by Sunberg. They tried to go back and throw the same pattern that he missed a minute ago resulting in an interception and a 15-yard penalty tacked onto it. Play action pass right there. Bootleg, counter sweep, plenty of time, but he just throws it right to Hobley. Boom, Hobley right there. All he had to do was jump up and catch it, and he does. He's an outstanding athlete, a good run. 4-4 four, four speed. One of the best free spaces in the Southeastern Conference. Let's see what the LSU can catch, capture that momentum, Keith, that Nebraska did after a turnover. Nine flags and 65 yards in penalties on the Huskers. And they give the ball to Hilliard. And Dalton is loose. One thing about I like about Dalton Hilliard is when he gets it going, he changes from an east-west runner to a north-south runner. At that time, he wasn't going to mess around juking or anything. I'm just going as far as I can go. Watch Burke, number 33, missed it right there. Burke had a chance to tackle him for a short game. Hilliard is a great runner. The run against Notre Dame, 66 yards for a touchdown, was a thing of beauty. Munford takes himself out of the play by shooting the gap. That's the risk that you have on the blitz. If you blitz your linebackers, you take them out of pursuit. If you don't make the play behind the line of scrimmage, the offense Captain, you they're gone with it. Ball goes to Gary James trying to get outside, and the Huskers spring him out, and he can't go anywhere. It's Neil Harris finally ran him all the way across the field and out of bounds, maybe a yard. Once again, the momentum changes, Keith. Ellen, Nebraska looked like they were going to go ahead 10 points, interception, penalty, and that momentum jumps right on the back of that LSU team, and they come out with a big play. Of course, Dalton Higgins can make a big play anytime. Yes. 152 to play in the third quarter. Nebraska leading 14 to 10. Second down and still 10 for LSU. Just short of the Husker 20. And this is Gary James. And it's first and goal. LSU at the Husker 10. LSU's running the Nat Nebraska play. Tom Osmond introduced that uh, pull and sweep, counter sweep, low fake. Bard's going to pull, the tackle is going to pull, the wing back came around, and James had a crack. Once again, he split the defense, and Neil Harris, number 11, makes a great stop. One-on-one -on -one tackle in the secondary. First and goal, and they've got to go 10 yards. Hilliard goes about three there. I like that little counter back inside. That Expected. As we look at Bill Onsberg, he's got to be pleased with this particular drive, the comeback that LSU has made. LSU has been sensational. You join us from the Orange Bowl. They've been sensational against this Nebraska defense, which was considered by many, including Keith and me, to be the best in America. Second down and goal from the seventh. Hilliard. Nice hole for Dalton. And he takes advantage of it as he ambles five yards to the two. 
Langford, the pulling guard, opened up the hole, but once again, a little misdirection. Why are they having success? They've got Nebraska on the run. When you got a defensive team on the run, they have a tendency to overreact to the first step of the quarterback. The quarterback moves to the right, the defense moves with him, and then the reverse opens up and makes the big game. Hilliard now 73 yards out. Gary James 66 yards in. Running formation, Keith. Tight ends and a wing back. The regular pro offense right here on the goal line. Two back, three Gary back. Gary James is the man that figures to get the ball. He doesn't. Ricochet keeps it. Throws it to the corner and incomplete. Roger McGee was over there. Lost his footing. Fell out of bounds. Caught the ball all right. But after he had stumbled and fallen out of the end zone. Keith, you called it perfectly. McGee, the wing back, is going to go all the way across. See him going behind the line of scrimmage. No one sees him. He's wide open. All Wicked has got to do is throw the ball to him. He takes a little bit long. Hits McGee a freshman trip. And he doesn't catch the ball until he has fallen out of bounds. What a tough break for LSU. Oh, they're going to go for three. Third and three calls. That's hard to believe what I just saw. <laughs> well, Wickersham, you know, in Tennessee, man, that wide open, you throw the ball with a little tissue paper. You lay it out there where he can't drop it. But the freshman tripped over his own feet. LSU is going to take a five-yard penalty now to give Lonnie Lewis a little better angle. That's something that Bill Arnsbarker said he wish he had done previously Nebraska, from the 19. Keith, Nebraska can refuse the penalty, I think. Yes, they can. Now, let's see what happens. Why don't they? I would refuse it. You keep that angle just as sharp as you possibly can. Th this is what happened earlier. L LSU had three points on the, the scoreboard, took them off because of roughing the kicker penalty, came down to first and six and did not score, had the ball about the two-yard line, tried a field goal, missed it. Bill Arnsberger said at halftime that he wished he had taken a penalty. Get out your rule book. I believe Nebraska could refuse the penalty. I think he refused any penalty. Kick is up, and he missed it. He missed from 19 yards wide right. Now he has missed from 24 yards wide left. Oh, that's a cruncher. You know that? With four seconds to go in the third quarter, he could have pulled LSU within one point, and instead he winds up missing it. Now Juan Batanzos may be taking heart. He lost the job of place kicking to Lewis back about midseason. LSU had some tough breaks down on the goal line, Stephen. Yeah, but they made them themselves. Yeah, they had it. Mark Breland, second pro fight, part of ABC's Wide World of Sports coming up uh, this Saturday on ABC at 4.30 Eastern and Pacific, 3.30 Central Time. And the U.S. Olympic Gymnastics people will be seen in competition featuring Fairmont, West Virginia's pride and joy, Mary Lou Rett. Tigers. Michael Brooks makes another big defensive play as he jumps on Doug DuBose for a loss. Michael Brooks, number 94, that's his 13th tackle for a loss on the right of your screen. There's a tight end there, but the tight end is blocking to the inside. Grimminger, number 58, pulling the blocking, but Grimminger can't handle it. He couldn't move him out. The speed, the size, the quickness of Michael Brooks tackles him for the loss. And the third quarter is over with Nebraska leading 14 to 10 and we'll be back after this commercial message of the word from our local station. Here's your final quarter. Nebraska with the ball. Second down and 17. Ball is inside the 15. And here's a draw play with DuBose getting the outside and getting loose and oh my gosh he was within a step or so of popping the big run of the day. Instead, somebody got a hand on him and brought him down, but he did pick up what appears to be a first down. It was Kevin Gidry, I believe, who saved the long run. So two, LS, two Nebraska coaches told me something that's very sacred to them, that Dubos, if he keeps his health, may make people forget, get this, Mike Rozier. They think he has the potential at this time in his career of Heisman Trophy winner, Rozier. From the 31, it's a first down for the Huskers, and DeVos comes again to the 35 for four. Which one of the bowl games is the biggest surprise to you, Frank? Keith, I would think the Iowa-Texas game. I just didn't think anybody could score that many points on Texas, but here are the stats for the third, up through the third quarter. You can see that 
Both teams continue to move the ball. Nebraska kind of won the third quarter, narrowing this lead by LSU, but still LSU has doubled. 405 yards has pretty much doubled the season average made against the Nebraska defense. Second down and six. DuBose spins away from the tackler and gets the first down up around the 42. This is definitely a DuBose series. Great run on the fake pass and run. An option play. The cornerback was not blocked. He spins and makes the big game. Turns what would have been a loss into a first down. That's what great ability can do for a running back. Like He's got 92 Duba. yards in the ball game now. He rushed for 1,000 and, what, 46 for the season. From the 42, Bush again shakes a leg and pulls out of a tackle. John Hazard had a hand on him but couldn't hold on to him and he cuts in there for three. Michael Brooks, like number 94, like uh, prefers to play over the air, not the tight end, but he's over the tackle, Morrow, who weighs 270 pounds, and you can see that Brooks uses his hands until he finds out exactly where the ball carrier is going. Then he separates himself and makes the play. Second down. Call it eight. They've marked him short of the 45. Sunberg throws it out. Threw it very hard. He both handled it. And he's got another Nebraska first down. As the Huskers will own it. Over on the LSU side near the 47. Outstanding play again by Doug Dubos. What a catch he made. One-handed, Keith. He just jumped up and stopped it with his, looked like to me, his left hand and pulled it down. Got an uh, LSU man down on the field. Looks like the nose man, Tommy Clapp. The big freshman from Gretna. So a timeout for him. Well, Nebraska started uh, back around there 15. And they've been punching right along. Jeff Smith is in there at I back right now. And it's first down for the Huskers. Here the 47. They goes inside with Scott Porter. Porter is a 200-pound senior, fifth-year man, and he moves the ball down near the 43. That's close to five-yard pickup, four yards anyway. There's your attendance, 75,608. That is the smallest crowd of the Sugar Bowl since 1977. But that is a norm for this year, apparently. Because I saw empty seats today in the Cotton Bowl. I saw empty, I know there were empty seats in the Rose Bowl because you could have bought a ticket this morning. Pretty good seat, as a matter of fact. I don't know about the Orange Bowl. Every other bowl that I have seen have had some empty seats. It's Jeff Smith cutting it back to the 40. I don't know whether or not that means uh, uh, we've got empty seats here or whether that is the capacity because we were told this was a sellout. Last year, however, the crowd was 77,893. If you can get 82,000, you can crowd 82,000 into the Superdome. They have had that number here for other games. Who's that they're working on? I believe it's Dubose. No, it's an LSU player. Yeah. It's, uh, it's the James and Dale. Here's the pass thrown out to the right side and caught by Todd Frame, the tight end. And that's on third down and three. Good enough for the first down. Let's check in with Tim Brent. Keith, they're working on LSU's strong safety, Jeffrey Dale. In that last series, he took a shot to his ribs. So the only thing they did, they took his shoulder pads off and put a rib protector on him, like a flak jacket. Putting him certainly back up now, he's going back in the game. Even more important than that on the other side is DeBose. DeBose has had his sore ankle retaped twice now. He's not only a fine runner, he's a very tough athlete. But it's hard to cure a sprained ankle playing on the rug. Bose is back in, so let's see how effective the tape job has been. Outside he goes. Not bad. First down inside the 25. What a cut he made, Chief. Looked like he was going to go outside. I guess Dale, no, I... Watch Brooks blocking Benning. 6'6", 290 pounds, and blocking on the linebacker. Finally, Brooks releases tries to get the feet of Dubos. He can't quite do it, but watch the cut right here inside. Dubos just turns and knifes right inside the block of Flora, number 77, for the extra yard. Dale made the tackle. First down, and Dubos now on 20 carries for 105 yards. It's been the difference in this drive. Nebraska hasn't blocked that effectively. 
Dubose has made the yardage mostly on his own. The great backs make yardage after they run out of blocking. Dubose seems to be able to do that as well as anybody we've seen all year. Ball just inside the 25, first down for the Huskers. They lead by four, 14 to 10, with 11 minutes to play in the game. Sunberg keeps it. Goes down the middle for frame touchdown. Once again, it was a counter sweep bootleg. I said earlier, in my time, it's the toughest pass to defend against that we ever faced, where they fake the backs in one direction, the quarterback rolls the opposite. He picks up the block of the fullback quarter. Right there, and then the center of Trina Witt comes out as a personal protector. You can see the LSU secondary will move completely. Green catches the touchdown pass. Got away from Lifford Hopley, and here's your extra point try. Sunberg puts it down, Klein kicks it, good. And you've got 10 minutes and 54 seconds remaining in this 51st annual Sugar Bowl football game. And the Huskers leading by 11, 21 to 10. Why is the bootleg so tough? Because the defensive backs, some of them read it as a play to the right. Others read it to the left. And that's exactly what happened. The safety man did not see the ball. Green is open for the touchdown, making the score 21 to 10. We'll be right back. Well, there's Todd Crane. They just caught the touchdown for an 11-point lead for the Cornhuskers. 10.54 to play in the game. Dalton Hilliard has joined Sammy Martin now as the deep men to accept the kickoff from Nebraska's Klein. At the one-yard line, Martin. And Sammy is across the 20, out near the 23. Keep that last drive was a vintage Nebraska drive featuring their tailback making the plays on his own a few little short passes until he faked the secondary out of position the quarterback that is opening up the end frame for the touchdown typical Nebraska second half march for a touchdown fourth quarter to yes you pound and pound and pound your running game gets better here comes Hilliard the 26 that's a pick up for Four. This ball game has been very strange. LSU has had the upper hand except on three Nebraska drives. They made so much yardage from sideline to sideline, but when they got to the goal line, Keith, they just couldn't stick it in, something they had a problem with all year long. They attempted 27 field goals coming into this game. Second down, six. Hilliard. I believe I'd give it to Hilliard every day. <laughs> He is exciting. He really is. Just and like Dubo. As good as runner. anybody in traffic. Yes. And he can run sideways. He can just start, go up, and then break to the to the boundary and just leave you holding nothing but air, the tackle that is. That's Bill Arnsberger. Very quiet. Came in without making much fanfare. Oh, I tell you, next year he's going to have a heck of football. He surely is. I'll bet you he finds him a big old buster to go on that goal line. I'll bet you by next year, too. Third down and two. Wickersham throws another interception. Why would you throw a third and two? On his last nine attempts, Wickersham has completed one, four incompleted, and now five have been intercepted. The amazing thing to me is that you would throw a third and two with Wickersham having the problem. He goes back and he throws the ball too low. The receiver is open, but the Nebraska defensive man jumps up. Who, who did you say that was? That's Strasburger. Oh, Scott Strasburger. The all-conference in. Walked on, earned a scholarship after the first year. Number 90, holds up the tight end, plays the quarterback. What an athlete. He's fullback in high school. Reverse, Swanson's got it. Number 17 turns for the goal line. And he gallops from the 34 down to about the 23. What did Tom Osmond say as we look at Scott, recipient of the National Football Hall of Fame scholarship, graduate scholarship for his outstanding academic work. And he's a great football player too. Three-year starter, Keith on that defensive end position. Cagey, smart. 
All at the 23. It's a first down. With four interceptions, incidentally, by Wickersham, a Sugar Bowl record. There goes the fullback, number 36, just pounding Scott Porter. And LSU defense now showing signs of weariness as he gets to the 17. Most coaches in college would agree that the team that can make the most yardage running the football will win the most football game. Nebraska follows that. Three-fourths of their yardage this year has been made running the football. Second down, four. Sundberg got trained. That was an audible. Pearson, the cornerback for LSU team, was up on the line of scrimmage, and Sundberg, using the experience and knowledge of his defense, watch him run right by, watch Rain run right by number 25. Number 25 is playing quarterback up on the line of scrimmage. That's no way to stop the tight end. You can see it's very easy, like taking candy away from the baby. Second touchdown for Green tonight. The quarterback, number 25, was right up on the line of scrimmage, within a yard of the line of scrimmage. Line for the kick. Good. 8.40 to play in the football game, and it's now a 18-point lead, 28-10 Nebraska. With 8.40 to go now, it's gut check time for LSU. 28 to 10, Nebraska. Remember Tom, Tom, Tom Osborne's comments when he came out of the locker room at halftime. Their Three philosophy five. includes fourth quarter in them. And right now they're in the process of doing just that. See, the game is 60 minutes long. A boxing match is 15 rounds. You've got to play to the end of the game. That's a very high kick, and it's quite deep in the end zone, and it should not return it, and it won't. Dalton Hilliard puts it down, the junior, but if that freshman Martin had gotten his hands on the ball, I think he might have come out with it. He's exciting. <laughs> he just looks like he's got blazing speed. I don't know what uh, time he's running the 40, but he makes everybody else look like they're pretty much standing still. Turnover, setting up the touchdown. It's tough enough to try to beat a team like Nebraska without turning the ball over to them and giving them scoring opportunities. This is James looking for some place to run. Can't find any. Ryan Washington put him on his back. Oh, that was James the Hilliard. It was James. Yeah. Washington was untouched and came in and made a beautiful tackle with a little bit of authority, Pete. Okay, second down and ten. The confidence of Wickersham has to be shaken, not only in him, but in his teammates. Wickersham having a rough second half is sacked inside the ten. Thrown down by number 96, Jim Scow. Second sack of the ball game. Give full credit to the Nebraska secondary. All seniors. Well, that's a provocative question, isn't it? Scare you to death if you really got <laughs> involved in it. A lot of us don't want to know what uh, lies ahead, Chief. <laughs> Nightline with Ted Koppel after your late uh, local news. <laughs> I'm concerned about tomorrow and the day after. <laughs> and the Super Bowl. throws it as far as he can. Fontenot is back there and jumped too soon and can't come down with it. If he'd have stayed in contact with the ground once he got that defender up in the air, then he had a free sail to the goal line. Now watch this. Fountain now runs right by Burks. Burks should never have gotten in this position. Well, he should have, should have stopped there. Look, just over his hand. Jumped too quick. If he kept running one step more before he jumped, it had been a touchdown. LSU has not done anything in this fourth quarter but turn the ball over and give Nebraska chances to score. A Kipling-esque play. If. They got 
Out of the end zone, Parker to punt it on fourth down and shoots it deep, way back up the field, all the way back to the 37. Taken by Jeff Smith. And Smith is cut down at the 45, Nebraska, and their penalty play. Nebraska must have 12 men on the field, Keith. I didn't see any other reason for one. Three, running. five, and five is 10. Three is 11. 12. 12. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. Might have. Yep. 12 men on the field. They played, a, they played the down with 12 men, meaning it's a 15-yard penalty. Had one of the men tried to get off the field and didn't play the down, but was still on when the ball was snapped, it's only a five-yard penalty. So this will be 15 yards, but I don't know whether to give them a first down or not because, no, it won't give them a first down. It will not give LSU a first down. It's Walden Cager down on the nope. field, hurt for the Tigers. Unless it's an automatic first down. LSU had fourth and 20, the 15-yard penalty if it is 12 men, 12 men on the field. Well, the 12 men on the field have been involved in uh, Sugar Bowl history. I remember in 1978, Penn State got caught with 12 men on the field in that classic with Alabama. Remember that? Now, that's not where you put... That couldn't be the foul. Players participating on the yeah. return team, 15-yard penalty. Hey, they can't, the you, they can't give them the play. You can't... you got to go back and penalize. So help me, Keith, you don't penalize from the from the basic spot, you go back to the preceding spot. When you play with 12 men, that's a, should have given them a 15-yard penalty from the line of scrimmage. I've never seen that happen. Remember, the, remember, the, Penn State, remember the Penn State, Nebraska game, in the o Alabama game, Penn State played 12 men. Well, I remember that uh, Alan, that Penn State... Uh, they came back and penalized them and gave yep. Alabama first down and That's won right. the ball game. Yep. That's right. Here's a very, very interesting stat. Nebraska, 28 points, 387 yards, but LSU only 10 points on 413, the repeating is that L Nebraska, when they get to the goal line, they put it inside. LSU couldn't do it. Sunberg keeps it, flips it out. And carrying is Shane Swanson, running from a wingback position. And Swanson turning up field, hit the chalk somewhere along there at about uh, where they marked him out, the 42. But that'll be enough for a first down for the Cornhuskers, and your clock now shows six minutes and 25 seconds to play in the ball game. Keith, I'm really interested. I wish Tim Brandt would have a chance to check with officials and see why they didn't penalize them from the line of scrimmage or whether it's an option. I've never known of it being an option for the uh, other team. Ball is given to Jeff Smith. First down, just beyond the marker. Brought down by Sean Burks, number 57. Oh, that Nebraska offensive line really showing their muscle right now. They are blocking the LSU team, sustaining the block, giving the ball carriers a chance to break into the secondary. From the 47th LSU on first down, Smith to about the 42. Now here's Tim Brent. All right, Frank Rose and Keith, I'm down here trying to get a clarification on that last rule. They say it is a post-scrimmage kick. In other words, it doesn't go back to the preceding play. It goes after the kick, mark off the 15 yards from that play. But the key is post-scrimmage play. I bet him $25 right oh, now. And you're him, getting and, heavy. And <laughs> give him Wait five to one odds that the ball is penalized back at the line of scrimmage. All right, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna, gonna pass that along. Write it Tell down. him I bet him five to one. That'll take care of the post-game party right there. <laughs> Second down and five. And Sunberg hands it inside to Scott Porter. And I'm either going to Franks or to his. The ball's inside the 40. You sure Barbara knows about all this heavy weight <laughs> you're doing here? I I don't think I've ever bet on a game in my life, but <laughs> I know that when I play 12, 13, 14, 15 men, 
they're going to bring it back and penalize me from the line of scrimmage. They're not going to let me get away with it and give me the ball. John Hazard is the Tiger down right now uh, on the 40-yard line, that big uh, sophomore defensive lineman. 5.09 to play in the ball game. They've got a timeout for John. Third down and three for Nebraska as Schnitzler comes to the bottom of the picture and flanks wide. LSU's got to get a hold of Nebraska now. The Huskers are starting to really roll up the yardage. They do get a hold of the quarterback this time, Sundberg, as he elected to keep instead of optioning down the line because Brooks had shut the door on him. And they've got him on short yardage, and it is fourth down and at least a full two. Maybe two and a half. So the punter Livingston is in. He's kicked four times. This will be number five. His last one was a 29-yarder. LSU's kick returning teams have not been particularly effective tonight. They've got Norman Jefferson back as their punt return man. And he's been pretty quiet. Pressure on. Kick is away. It's a bad kick. Shanked it right off the side of his foot under that pressure. And it takes an LSU bounce. And Todd Frayne catches the ball up at the 34 there. LSU will have the ball after a five-yard punt by Scott Livingston. So they loaded the cannon and sent the shells, and the pressure got to him, and he couldn't deliver it. Well, the Super Bowl is going to be played at Stanford Stadium this time around, and you're going to see it for the first time on ABC. Our coverage beginning at 4 Eastern, 3 Central, 1 Pacific, January 20. Four teams left in the fight in the NFC, the Bears and the 49ers, and the AFC, the Steelers, and the Dolphins. And back goes Wickersham to throw. He's had a miserable second half. Little short clip out to Gary James. Can't get around and get away from number 84, Brad Smith, who is a junior. The speed of the Nebraska linebackers reacting to the pass has been nothing short of sensation. Seldom do you see linebackers intercept a lot of passes or make plays like Smith just made on a great runner. Shows that those ends and linebackers are very quick and smart, cagey players. Second down and eight after that two-yard pickup. Wickersham straight back. Gets it away down the middle, and he had his man. He had Roger McGee wide open. McGee was absolutely available to him, and he just simply missed it. Miserable second half for Wickersham. He's one out of ten. He's had four intercepted. The Nebraska defense are now playing pass. Makes it very tough for the quickest hand to throw the ball down there. Those linebackers getting back. He was afraid he would throw the ball into the linebackers again. He overthrew it high. Something you never do is overthrow it. One of those middle zone passes. It should be intercepted. It's third and eight. That one's thrown short of the first down. He picked out the one man who was short of the first down marker, Sammy Martin, and hit him right on the number. The ball is just outside the 40. Here's Tim. All right, Keith, you and Frank are getting serious about this rule, so I went after Al Granning of the SEC. He's the alternate here tonight, one of the officials. Twelve men on the field. Now, doesn't go back to the preceding play? Tim, uh, 12 men, who, all of whom participate, is a foul at the snap as well as all the way through the play. It's considered all the way through the plate. So the offended team has an option of taking it at the previous spot, in which case it might have given them a first down, it didn't in this case, or at the succeeding spot, the end of the plate. All right, Al. They chose. Thank you very much. And Frank, I want to know if I can get in on that 25. <laughs> yeah, the, the, bet, the bet was he had the choice of coming back and taking it to line of scrimmage. You can't play 12, 12 men and not have a choice of taking the penalty. He's trying to cop out now, Tim. No, I'm not. I know he is. <laughs> We've got him. Besides, uh, Granning is another old, he's a uh, former Georgia Tucker, right? Yes, Chick so, Granning. So you, oh, Chick Dinner. <clears throat> he's still debating it. Nebraska's taken over the ball, as you saw that last pass go awry. And Travis Turner is in at quarterback now for the Cornhuskers. And all they have to do is just simply run out the clock. With the clock showing 2-5-0 and Nebraska leading by 18 points. To give you an idea of how this ball game turned, and you've got an LSU man hurt, the game turned if in the form of a single person, the quarterback for LSU, Wickersham. In the first half, he was 17 out of 25 with one interception. In the second half, he was 3 out of 13 for 10 yards and three interceptions.
There's your time, 2.44 remaining, where it is second down and seven, Nebraska's ball on the LSU 38-yard line. That's an amazing turnaround it for is. Jam, isn't it? And you got to give some credit, obviously a lot of credit, to the Nebraska, Nebraska defense. defense and the coaches, the adjustment they made at halftime. How they came back and just poured it on. Turner keeping, throws down the middle, and the pass is caught by number 92, tight end Don Bourne. Got a few linemen downfield, Keith. And the penalty flag's going to wave it up. Watch Brooks, number 94. Once again, show and display what a great athlete he is. Why the LSU people are so high on him. He plays off the blocker and then comes in and jumps right up in the face of Turner, the quarterback. Lyman downfield, loss of down. No, it's not loss of down, excuse me. Five yard penalty now. It used to be 15, Keith. Ineligible receiver downfield on the offense. That's a loss of down, down third yes. down. Changed it from 15 to 5 and made it a loss of down. Third down and 13. Japanese broadcasters sending this game back to their homeland. Here comes Turner on an option. Makes it, keeps it, now drops it. And it's picked up by number 24, Keith Jones. Jones is a freshman out of Omaha. And he can't get around the corner as LSU's defense, led by Michael Brooks, takes him into the sidelines. What we've seen today, tonight by this Nebraska football team started slow. LSU with a sideways offense, throwing and completing those short passes, kept them off balance. But Keith, as we, we've said many times, the defense adjusts to that passing game. They make those adjustments, get familiar with the offense, get a little bit better break on the quarterback, resulting in those interceptions and turning the game around. Minute and 40 to play in the game now. And Turner gives it to Jones again. And Jones is caught at about the 37. Sunberg has been voted the MVP, the most valuable player, the quarterback for Nebraska. 10 out of 15, 143, three touchdowns, two interceptions, plus one running. So oh, the MVP is Craig Sunberg, quarterback for Nebraska. I like that, Keith. I, Craig Sunberg came to Nebraska, same time that Turner Gill did, sat on the bench, for three years, red-shirted, finally his fifth year, has had a chance to come in and play. It's only fitting that he was voted the outstanding player. What Nebraska a... running out four downs there, and uh, they don't get the first down on the fourth down. So here comes uh, LSU now with Doug Powell in at quarterback. Throws it deep, and on his first pass of the ball game, it is intercepted by number 45, Chris Carr. Well, it works as good as a kick anyway. The ball is intercepted, and Nebraska will possess it just outside its own 20. Is that the fifth or sixth interception by Nebraska? Anyway, that sets the record. Three was the record for any Sugar Bowl game in 51 Sugar Bowls. I think it's five. Five interceptions is a new record. Greg Sundberg from Lincoln, Nebraska. Six turnovers total. They fumbled it away one time. 125 to go in the game. Now a matter of running out the clock. I think the outcome of this one is academic. Here comes number 23 around the corner. Roger Lindstrom. As both coaches now are trying to give everybody a chance to say I played in the 51st Sugar Bowl. This ABC Sports exclusive brought to you by L.A. from Anheuser-Busch. A whole new brand of beer enjoyment. By AT&T, the more you hear, the better we sound. By Mr. Goodwrench and General Motors Parts, who help you keep that great GM feeling with genuine GM parts. And by U.S. Armed Forces, it's a great place to start. Not a bad place to finish either. Here comes number 24, Keith Jones. I think you're going to hear something from him, too, before he's through. Because he does possess a great deal of speed. He, he's just a freshman, too. Played some of the year this season on the freshman team before the injuries to Miles, the second string quarterback, uh, back, and he brought him up. The executive producer of ABC Sports, Rune Arledge, coverage of the 53rd Sugar Bowl game, produced by Chuck Howard, directed by Andy Sedaris, our technical director, John Allen, 
Associate Director John McGinnis, our technical manager Bob Armbruster, unit manager Jonathan Lees, and assistant to the producer David Moss. And this could be the last film, won't be the last play of the game, as Swanson carries the ball. So they give Shane Swanson a few chances tonight to stick his head in the middle of the melee and do some ball carrying. Our stats by Dave Bernson.